What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, where we talk about our favorite fantasy series and topics. We are your co-hosts, Spencer and Gabe. And Gabe, what are we doing today? Oh, Spencer, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> We've got a big, this is going to be a crazy, awesome discussion. I heard We are joined by Sam today. Uh, we're talking about Night Angel Nemesis, the first book uh, in Brent Week's new sequel trilogy, The Kyler Chronicles. That's right. And as always, keep Gabe's impending case of raccoon delivered rabies at bay by hitting the subscribe and like buttons. It helps us out a lot and keeps Carl the raccoon fed so it doesn't need to feed on Gabe's feet. You can also follow us on Twitter and Discord, linked below in the description. And we also just launched our Patreon page where you can get shout outs on our show, downloadable bookmarks, and even exclusive content that we will be adding in the next couple months, all while helping the podcast pay for monthly podcasting expenses. Also, if you like the Night Angel series, check out my bonus video I just put up where I talk about my top 10 favorite rogues in fantasy. I think you'll find a lot of great recommendations similar to Night Angel in there. Uh, well, with that out of the way, let's catch up and talk about what we've been reading lately uh, besides Night Angel, because yeah. I know that that's probably taken most of the week for, for all of us. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Sam, welcome back. Uh, you yes. just came on recently for Ember Blade and Shadow Casket, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of fun. Um, it was, so, it really was. Yeah, and you came on for uh, two of our Night Angel mm -hmm. episodes. We did our first episode with uh, a couple other friends, then you came on for Beyond or Shadow's Edge and Beyond the Shadows, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and we we chatted about those. So I was super excited to get you on here. I think I reached out to you maybe a couple months ago or something. I'm like, the book's coming out on <laughs> April 23rd. Are you going to read it with us? You're like, hell yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to this. But uh, yeah, how have you been doing? Really good, really good. Um, I've just been really busy studying for my broker's license. So this was a really nice change of pace for the week to take a break from that. And I'm really excited to talk about it. Nice. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, what uh, is there anything else that we've been reading in the past couple weeks, like before before Night Angel? Yes, I have been reading the Red Rising. Oh, Red Rising. Yeah. So <laughs> I am currently on Morningstar. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So oh. I'm, I'm maybe two hours into Morningstar, and uh, yeah, I like it Dude. quite a bit. So yeah. I, I got to ask without, without spoiling anything, obviously, how much did you shit yourself at the end of Golden Sun? Dude. So I did. I definitely <laughs> did. Um, but I'll be honest. Like I, I knew something really like that was, yes, oh. I knew I, it, I was like, this is just, there's gotta be this turn that comes out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. So, so I was super surprised yeah. with what happened, but yeah. In my head, I was like, there's, there's got to be, there's got to be something. And, yeah. and it was, it was very extravagant. You know? Yeah. So I was like, holy crap. But yeah. yeah, that is, that is like one of my favorite endings to any book period, the yeah. ending of Golden Sun, just because it's like, like I, I personally didn't see it coming and I was just like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck, dude? Like, yeah. It was oh. pretty wicked, pretty wicked. <laughs> so gnarly um so yeah all right well uh I, i'm super glad are you enjoying them so far are, yes are you liking yes. them okay yep, i'm cool. liking them absolutely very, very cool. <laughs> yeah. uh all right sam have you been reading anything besides night angel yeah so i actually uh i finished a trilogy in about a week because i could oh, not put oh, it down shit. it's the day the day of a bad trilogy it's by mm. s.a chakra 40 i believe mm. it's pronounced um okay but it's got city of brass uh mm empire or kingdom of copper and then empire of gold is the third one okay um it's all about like gin you know like dj i n n and oh. it's like like genie magic yeah like this magically hidden utopia that the, most of them live in and like the human oh. world has no idea it's going on but it has such a complex like government hierarchy um the different groups like the way they distinguish the different gin and i i could not put them down it was they, they were phenomenal so if you're into that kind of magical fantasy i couldn't recommend them anymore okay cool. and did yeah, you they were, 
Did you binge them all back to back? Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. I had owned the first book for years and I had finished another series and someone had wrote online on Reddit somewhere like, I liked the series. What should I read now that I'm done? And somebody suggested City of Brass. And I was like, you know, I've had that upstairs for, I think it came out in 2019. I was like, let me try it. And I blew through the first one, immediately ordered two and three. And I went through them. I sat outside for like seven hours one day, just oh, binging shit. one of them. I couldn't put it down. You never knew what was going to happen next. I never wow. guessed correctly on the plot. It, they were very, very good. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. cool. They're- the reviews are are <laughs> gnarly good. Yeah, like they're oh. really extremely good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll have to I'll have to check this out. Is is the plot itself very complex and like very like you have to pay attention to what's going on carefully? Um, or? Sort of. I mean, the the main plot. This isn't giving anything away. Is about a Jin living in the human lands who doesn't know her heritage or who her parents are, and one day another Jin finds her and is like you can't be here and like takes her off on this quest to get her back to the magical hidden city. Yeah. And then tons of crazy stuff happens. <laughs> I can't okay. say anymore because yeah, it sure. would give things away, but right. it's, it's a very good plot. It keeps you guessing until the very last page on certain things. Mm. And I, I, it's been a book that in a long time, I physically could not put them down. I, I wow. put a lot of other things to the side because I needed to know <laughs> yeah. what was going to happen. That's awesome. That's <laughs> okay. And it's, it's it's similar to the book that we read because it goes back and forth with who's narrating oh, each chapter. Right. So you don't follow just one person's story, which also keeps it really interesting. Because a lot of authors, when they go back and forth, you could end up with chapters where you're like, I don't care. Get me back to the other yeah. storyline. Yeah. And there's none of that in these books. Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Yep, I've got it. Yeah. I've got it. I've already got it marked <laughs> on my Audible. Okay, sweet. Nice. So I, I read the fourth book in the Red Rising series, Iron Gold, part of the second trilogy. Mm-hmm. And man, I I really liked it. I had not. Really? T- yeah, I, I had not touched it for a long time because I I really like how Morning Star kind of ended. And I thought yes. that like <laughs> that that was like a good a, a mm-hmm. good ending, not necessarily like, I don't know, in some ways it was like a happy ending, but mostly it was just like a. a complete ending it felt like yeah you would have been fine if yeah. it had just ended there right mm-hmm. and and so I never really I I knew I was going to go on eventually but I knew that the sequel trilogy changes the way the story is told there's multiple POVs as opposed to just arrows and I wasn't really sure how I was going to like that um and so I, I knew I would get to it eventually but I put it to the side for a long time and then Mike's book reviews, he started doing his read through of the whole series. And I wanted to keep up with his uh, live streams where he would do like in-depth uh, book discussions. And so his Iron Gold one is coming up in, I think, a week. And so I was like, OK, I got to, you know, I have a little bit of time before Night Angel comes out. I need to just read this and get through it. And I loved every second of it. Like, I, I don't think there's a single part of that book that I didn't enjoy. And what, like I said, what I was most worried about was the different POVs. I absolutely loved every single POV. Like every, mm-hmm. every single, there's four of them. And all four of them, I was just like, they're all the best. Like I, matter of fact, there was times where I was in Darrow's POV and I wanted to go back to like a side character's POV. Mm-hmm. And so especially uh, it, for those that have that have read the the series Lyria, she is one of my favorite characters now. The, the narrator, the, that's the other cool thing. There's four narrators. So it's, oh, that is cool. Yeah, so they're all told, all the oh, POVs cool. are in first oh, person. Oh, in the audio book. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Cool. And so they're they're all in first person, each POV, and they're narrated by a different person. And her narrator, I, I need to look it up and see who it was, but her narrator made me cry so many times because the narrator was like crying while she was narrating during like these mm-hmm. really sad moments. And I was just like, oh my oh, God, wow, my yeah. heart. Like, ah. cool. um, so yeah, just out, outstanding performance. I enjoyed the whole thing. I can't wait to go on to Dark Age, the uh, the fifth one 
Um, and then I know Lightbringer is coming out in June, I think June or July, something like that. Mm. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Like, I, I can't believe I waited this long to, to no, go on see, to the sequel I, trilogy. I think you made the right decision is what I was going to tell you is because yeah. I didn't take a break between them and sure. I kind of had burnout from it. That's and fair. So yeah. I read like a third of it and I ended up putting it down because I was just like, it was turning into almost like misery porn, you know, yeah, where it's like, right. I don't know how much more I can take <laughs> yeah. of it. <laughs> For and, sure. <laughs> and so I put it down and I didn't go back. And I, I kind of wish I'd given myself even a, a month's break. Yeah. And then yeah. I think I could have gone back and enjoyed it. And now it's been so long that I would have to start. From at the, least from yeah. probably book two. I think I'd be okay not starting at book one because yeah. I, I remember enjoying that so much that I can probably. Yeah you know reference it fine but that's that's exactly what i did because i i read the first book and then just stopped yeah for like for like yeah. maybe a year yeah and mm -hmm. then and then spencer's it was part of a deal that we have going ongoing <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> uh and so i yeah it's good nice i think that a buffer is is definitely good and and where i'm at like i'm i'm glad that i did that uh, for exactly what you're saying is because I probably could have gotten burned out if I had kept going. Mm -hmm. um, but jumping back in this time, I was like, I feel like, you know, it's like 20 or no, not 20. It's uh, I think it's nine years later after the events of uh, Morningstar. And so it's a, a bit of a jump in time. But I also felt like, you know, we'll talk about it in a second, but Night Angel Nemesis, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it felt very different than the first trilogy, just Big in time. the way the story was yeah. kind of told and whatnot. Uh, Iron Gold felt very similar to the original mm -hmm. trilogy. Like it didn't feel like a lot had changed besides mm -hmm. just the addition of extra POVs. Gotcha. Um, cool. So I think I really like that. But honestly, you could probably just, you could probably just read like a summary of, of uh, yeah. golden sun and morning star, because that's kind of what I did when, when I was reading iron gold, there were certain parts that I would get to where I'm like, wait, what's an iron rain again. And I just had to like, look up like what, <laughs> what an iron rain is. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I remember that brought back memories. I forgot about those. Yeah. As well. <laughs> I so. do remember that though. I do remember what an iron rain is. So yeah. maybe I do remember a lot more than, than I thought I did. Yeah. more than i remembered the night angel that's yeah sure, right unfortunately <laughs> um well so the only other thing that that i read i i finished that and i had like a day and a half before night angel came out and i was like what's something like really short that i can listen to for a little bit and i picked up impact winter have you uh listened to this on audible no oh god so this is uh G Gabe and I love it. Yeah. It's um it's an audio audio production. So it's not like do you, do you know what like a graphic audio book is? Yeah. I did mind? that for Night yeah. Angel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yes. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so it's like that but it's good. And Very good. um it it's like, like that I'll, but it's good. <laughs> yeah. And like <laughs> the this the sound effects are all really balanced with the voices. And, um, it, they just do us, they do such a good job with it to where like the audio the audio is balanced so well that if someone's rock walking up on the right side of the room, you hear it in your right headphone. Mm -hmm. So like you, you kind of have like this spatial awareness while it's all going mm -hmm. on. Um, but it's basically, uh, kind of like a last of us kind of thing where oh. an apocalypse has happened, but it's not zombies, it's vampires, so almost kind of like a 30 days or tw 28 days later, or no, that was zombies, wasn't it? 30 days of night. Um, that's what I'm thinking. 30 of. days of night. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's like the apocalypse has happened. Vampires are kind of roaming the earth. Like, oh, I like that. Yeah. And like the sun still comes out. So they kind of hide during the daytime. But if you go out at night, you are like, you are outnumbered a <laughs> hundred to one. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of just like about these people surviving in this time where like they have to be really careful around these vampires. And then, you know, you have a couple POVs that are the vampires and it's interesting to see both sides because it does the thing where it's like, you know, not all vampires are bad, but it doesn't do it in like a twilight way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like more of like a real, 
like a hey, realistic yeah. yeah yeah it's like you know we're we're not bad people we just happen to you know have this curse or whatever um and so i i highly recommend it is by far one of my favorite audio productions ever and they're coming out with a they're coming out with a season two for it because it's kind of done in like episodes like it's mm -hmm. it, it's free on audible and it's all in one book and you can just listen to it all the way through but instead of like chapters it's like you know 45 yeah. minute long episodes or whatever oh i'll have to check that out yeah so i it it's kind of similar to empire of the vampire by yes. jay christoff it's like a very similar okay yeah i love that book so <laughs> yeah yeah very very similar i think that you know it's not it's not like as grim dark as that, but I I think if you like that general idea of mm -hmm. vampires kind of taking over the world, then you'd like it a lot. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, shall we talk about Night Angel, guys? Yes, we shall. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Uh, guys, we are going to give you our spoiler warning, but before we do, I'm going to let you know that we have more Night Angel content coming your way after this. I am going to be putting out a spoiler-free Night Angel review, just like one of my, you know, 15, 20-minute reviews or something, uh, so that if you're trying to decide whether you want to read Night Angel Nemesis or not, like, you can watch that and uh, decide for yourself. Um, but I'll just say right now, in my opinion, you absolutely should. Yeah, you definitely, yeah. like, if, you, if you've already read the original trilogy, like, you you should read Night Angel. You'd be losing out on so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you didn't. All right, guys. Well, here's your spoiler warning. We're going to be spoiling all of the Night Angel trilogy and this book, obviously. Uh, so spoiler warning in three, two, one. You've been warned. All right, guys. So we're about to talk about a lot of dark shit uh so <laughs> are we are we all getting drunk for this i assume yeah. absolutely okay yeah with my absolutely. huge glass of wine yeah i i figured i figured we'd need some alcohol for this yeah. one yeah it seems appropriate yeah <laughs> <laughs> i i finished i finished the book um and i i tweeted out uh i was like i just finished it it was amazing. It was incredible. It was completely unexpected. And I definitely need a long, here. hot shower. <laughs> I, I, I have the tweet right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? Okay. So Spencer Fantasy File says, wow, that was incredible. Completely <laughs> unexpected and amazing. And now I desperately need a shower. <laughs> yeah. And not only that, but the author, Brett yeah, Weeks, Brett says, Weeks. he says, a review at once gratifying and puzzling. <laughs> like eight minutes after Spencer posted it, it yeah cool. yeah so yeah it was man i'm i'll i'll, I'll wait to i'll wait to say my piece because i have a lot <laughs> yeah. to say about it so yeah so so why don't one of you guys go tell me what you're uh kind of because i feel like and correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like all of our opinions about the book changed as it went on so talk about like your general thoughts but also kind of like how it started and how it's going. Go ahead, Sam. Um. Okay, so it started out, you know, with Kyler all depressed and not wanting to do anything. And I was kind of like, oh, is this going to be a whole book? Like, <laughs> yeah. He's in like a terrible mood the whole time. Like, is this going to be enjoyable? Um, and I was pleasantly surprised, you know, yeah. I, I really enjoyed the journey in the beginning and where it ended up in the end and, um. You know, with the narration, I know it was like a different narrator. Um, yeah. I would say my the only thing that annoyed me about the narration is it, Kyler's supposed to be 20 and the narrator sounds sounded old. yeah. significantly older. Yeah. Um, so hearing the thoughts of what is clearly a 20 year old coming out of a much older man's voice yeah. kind of took me out of it a little bit. So I, I think I went back to to reading a lot because I was like he has very juvenile thoughts and yeah. hearing it from this older man just kind of takes you out of it a lot but oh yeah towards, towards the end it didn't really bother me I got used to it he has a terrific narration voice I don't know if this was the right role for him right yeah <laughs> um, but you know I have to say like it, it was a little slow to pick up but once it did it definitely kept me Engaged. going back for more and more yeah, yeah so I I enjoyed it overall like four out of five yeah Nice. I'd agree. Yeah, I was I was very 
tough on the the narration at first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just really just challenged by the fact that they didn't keep the other one, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that was like really hard. I even texted Spencer. I was like, dude, why? Like, <laughs> yeah. Why, <laughs> why would they do the it? Point? Like, I'm just trying to think of a situation that would have made him want to change it or if it was a public i don't know what it could be but like they, yeah. they couldn't get him maybe couldn't get him like or too I expensive or like whatever yeah. whatever happened it did unfortunately yeah. but but yeah so that was tough um once i got like you know once i was probably halfway through you know you kind of soak it up and you get used to mm -hmm. the voice and you can you know for because of course i didn't have the book but this is one of the books that i would have probably rather read yeah text right, right. like i would have rather done that just because i can picture it better and hear the Kylar that I know yeah. um, mm -hmm. so very well. And so that was, that was tough, but yeah, once, once stuff started getting moving and, um, you know, kind of the missions and, and stuff was starting to take place, it was much easier. I, I didn't even notice it. It was, I yeah. was just invested mm -hmm. in, uh, in Kylar and kind of this, yeah. this, you know, story that was, uh, pretty fucked up yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah 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 i would i would agree about the narrator i was pretty disappointed that it wasn't paul bomer yeah. um i think that i think that simon vance does a good job when he's doing something like um the ranger is something not the ranger's apprentice um maybe it was like the last ranger or something but he plays like this old kind of grizzled um like ranger that kind of protects this city from you know incoming dangers and mm. stuff uh and i think he did a good job in that because the guy in that book is supposed to be like in his 50s yeah. he's like a retired uh veteran basically and i completely agree with sam where it's like man why like i like i don't know i don't know why they chose simon vance for this i know that he does the uh the uh black prism but or the Lightbringer books Mm. um and so maybe they just wanted to keep him on from that i don't know but <laughs> yeah i thought he sounded like david attenborough and i was watching one of those like nature oh, shows yeah, yeah, yeah. and <laughs> yeah. that was all i could That's picture a, was that yeah, i felt yeah. like i was watching one of these like my earth you know yeah like, you're like seeing like earth. elephants <laughs> roaming in the savannah like in your head and you're like yeah. oh my I had god to, yeah i had to check and i was like is this david attenborough <laughs> like they yeah. sound so That's similar funny. so right um, like Gabe said, at, towards the second half of the book, I didn't even notice it anymore. Sure. But when Kyler's like, oh, boobs, like I shouldn't be looking at boobs. And yeah. Like, well, like, it sounds on. like a 60 plus year old man saying this. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's taking me out of it a little you know, bit. Right. Well said, yeah. Well said. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, exactly. Like he just doesn't sound like he's uh kind of a, well, a spry young immortal man 80 yeah. percent of this book is kyler's thoughts right you know so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so i i mean i i guess narration aside i think that for me you know i've i've been looking forward to this book for a long time uh because i i read the original trilogy back when i was like 18 or 19 and i'm 31 now um, and so I've, I've been waiting for this for like a good decade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it, it feels so good to, uh, be back in this world and be back with these characters. Uh, but when I, I did start the book, I was like, this is not what I yes. expected. Yes. Um, and I, I didn't mind the, the first person POV being Kyler's. I thought that was actually a really good idea. But it feels like, and, and I, I think this is just kind of what happens to authors as they, you know, do one series and go on to another one and go on to another one and then kind of come back. Uh, Brett, Brent Weeks has obviously changed as an author since he wrote the original trilogy. And you can tell in this book because the first like half of this book did not feel like Night Angel to me. I was like, yeah. th this feels like, I was like, this just feels like a different series altogether yeah. with the same characters, uh, even with like how, and I think part of it too, was that I've had a decade to like make theories and like, you know, fantasize about like how the next book would be or whatever. And none of that came true like yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you, you make this picture in your mind for 10 years 
about this thing. And then it comes out and it's nothing like it. It throws you for a little bit of a loop. And so it took me like a really long time to to get acclimated to what he's trying to do with the story now and the different direction that he's trying to take it in. But once I did, I was fully on board. Yeah. But by the time we get to the dinner party or like the ball or whatever yep. that was where they go to like the house. Yeah. And um, I think that's where we first see like the collars or whatever. Yes, and the bracelets and stuff. Yeah. yeah. At that point, I was like, okay, like it's go time. Like this feels... Yeah like mission not, mission on mission Let's on go. yeah yeah <laughs> and it, it's like it it still doesn't feel like original night angel but it feels closer to that than it's been lately yeah um and mm-hmm. so i i feel like i feel like that really kind of saved it for me and got me back into the feel of of night angel and then when he gets onto the ship it was really interesting too because i feel like it slowed way down from what a typical night angel book is because he has like this room that he can go back to and kind of recoup and sleep. Yeah. That that was one thing that I noticed too. Like it totally surprising. Yeah. Super (laughs) surprising. Like you'd be in action. And then all of a sudden he's like, no, it's, you know, I, I slept for like what? 12 hours. Like you've been asleep. (laughs) It's like, whoa, we, you never ever saw that in the last books, dude. Right. He got he got maybe an hour or two if he really needed to sleep, but it was go, go, go. Yeah. And, and so it was, it was interesting to see this kind of uh, this mission be drawn out into multiple days, yeah. you know, where he's able to like take moments and like rest and and have like small moments like with Vi and, and other people. And so it, it was definitely like a different pace. But then when you get action scenes and I know we'll talk about it later, but there's an action scene where. Uh, he just decides, fuck it, and just goes ham on everybody yep. the whole time, just kills everybody around yeah. him. And that's when I was like, this is Night Angel. Yeah. Like this, yeah. mm-hmm. this feels like Night Angel. So, um, so yeah, in the end, I really liked it. I would say that it's probably, it would probably, it would probably rank under book three and and book one and then it would be like night angel nemesis and then book two maybe i think Mm -hmm. because it's it's definitely not my favorite in the series but again it was so nice to to be back here and be back with these characters that i loved so much for most of my young adult life yep so um well so what i was thinking was did you guys feel like this book was darker than the original trilogy because like the original trilogy was dark but some things that happened in this like he dismembers a guy's body but keeps like the center alive so that the guy will be like punished i guess and he like takes his eyes out that way like so i mean yeah i would i would say that overall no it's not as dark but there's there's like maybe three moments where it is certainly darker yeah yeah certainly very darker that's how i felt my first initial reaction was like no i did not think this was darker i mean the original night angels open up with like rape rape. and yeah exactly yeah a man man on man child rape and i mean i think it's true kyler his emotional state was like broken so that did lend to it being dark but he felt broken more through all of this than the actual dark night angel so i actually found it to be i actually found it a little more juvenile than all of the other books and i don't know if it's because i only listened to all the other books and so reading this one more than i did the other ones i don't know if because I was reading Kyler's thoughts, I was like, oh, he's like really young. Like yeah. it really did come off as like a young man's thoughts. And yeah, I wasn't right. sure if it was just because I was not listening to it this time that it like hit harder, but I thought it felt a little more juvenile overall. Mm. I would totally agree. I think that in in the, you know, the first series, like, of course he is a kid and there's all those stuff with the like feeling hormones for the first time and what to do with mm-hmm. that and this and that. But this book, I felt like he was challenged so many times with stuff like that, where he's like sitting with Vi and he's like, yeah, I can't can't look at her like, don't please body don't kill me now, you know, and and that happened like several times. And I was like, so that's interesting because he's, you know, he's 10 years old. Well, probably more than 10, obviously, but. No, this is only like nine months after the. Okay, the, yeah, I didn't mean more. I didn't mean more than ten. Right? I didn't mean more than ten. Yeah, because yeah. he was like what seventeen or eighteen. He he was like what thirteen in the first book, and then goes up from there. 
yeah he he's probably he's probably like 21 now or something i think they said yeah like 20 but you think you know you think from like 17 is where the hormones are at right 21 start to level out and kind of understand what's going on and you can control yourself a little bit better I don't know. Uh, I, I wasn't able to. Thought, <laughs> yeah. My only thought was that like, okay, if this is his actual thoughts, then okay. Like maybe that very quickly goes through your mind and yeah, you move through on. Yeah, that, through that. Right. That's, but fair. That's fair. He did like, I, I did think the book could have probably been at least a hundred, if not 200 pages shorter. Oh, if without like, a doubt. Yeah. Cut out all of this. Like, oh, I shouldn't look at her like boobs. Yeah. Blah, blah. It was yeah. kind of just at one point, like, oh my God, dude. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah chill i know, I know it's like i know yeah, it's relax. like i i, I kind of felt like that too i was like how many times has he had the same exact conversation with vi yeah um and, and or even with himself like, or even in his head yeah. is what yeah. i was gonna say with himself yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that 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 got kind of annoying and Repetitive, i definitely yeah and, and i think that there are parts of this book that drag on to the point where like um it, just like like he was on the ship for like three quarters of the book yeah and, and i'm like man we could have cut down some of these more like insignificant things that happened and and made it a little bit shorter and i mean you know me i'm always gonna want more night angel the more we can get the better yeah. but at the same time like if you want something with like a snappier pace like pare it down a bit you know yeah i do uh, yeah. i do feel like the stuff with vi and the, the resting and stuff on the ship was very important to the mm. story though mm-hmm. too yeah. yeah yeah um so i don't i don't want to downplay that at sure. all because i do think it was not crucial but it was it, it was something that i noticed that sure it got tedious but it was like i i get why he's writing this mm-hmm. you know right. like i understand what the point is yeah yeah spencer had asked me to keep track of like everywhere kyler went and i thought it was going to be like a bigger ask no like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's went so to like three realized... places total yeah. <laughs> exactly i think i said to spencer at one point i was like i know you asked me to like write everywhere he goes but like he kind of didn't really go <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah he was on that boat for yeah. the yep. majority of the book which made that job for me much easier but yeah <laughs> I, thought it, I thought like it was just gonna go a lot more places so I was yeah. surprised that it really was just a few locations yeah yeah I think because uh, when I sent that I was about maybe halfway through the book and I'm like oh he's not in like scenario so like yeah. yeah so like these are completely new places and I hadn't been paying attention to where he was going and so I was like well Sam's at the beginning of the book right now. I'll just ask her to like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. And that's funny because I got my book so much earlier than you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I like, it, it took me so much longer. <laughs> but yeah, so kind of going back to, uh, to Kyler's maturity in this book, I feel like, I feel like I maybe felt the opposite as of you guys, where I thought in this book, he was more mature maybe not the like the things like with vi and stuff like that but just like in his overall kind of dour kind of mentality yeah and now i'm wondering if i just think that because of vance's narration that could Uh, very very much be it (laughs) yeah you know like like hearing kyler's thoughts just come out of like this old man's voice i i think that that might have lent itself to me just kind of thinking that he's like older now and and stuff because while i was going through this book i'm like man it it sucks that you know kyler went through all this stuff with elaine because he's just not like fun anymore like he used to have all this like snarky humor and very like witty and very juvenile humor i'm like i just feel like he doesn't do that like at all anymore but i do wonder if it was just because of uh if it was just because of the old man narrating it oh we get chapter titles in this book which i thought was cool in this trilogy uh because we never got chapter titles before it was just always like chapter one chapter two chapter three yeah. and i really like those because then it like it gives you like a little bit of a hint as to what the chapter is about i know it's a small thing but i always love them no yeah that's cool i'm actually someone who always 
kind of skipped over chapter titles and I never realized it until there was a reddit post and someone was like do you read chapter titles or not and I it made me realize like oh I always I even if it's <laughs> yeah. there I just like skip over it I oh wow. I never read them it, I, it's not a conscious choice I for some reason my brain just doesn't look at them yeah Our... I was like let's get to the reading <laughs> Are are you also the person that like skips prologues? Um, no, but I am okay. someone who, if I'm reading <laughs> something descriptive, I kind of basically skip over it because <laughs> I have a lot of trouble picturing things in my head. I I really do. If I have a reference ahead of time, then I can picture it. Yeah, yeah. But if I read the description of a person, I am not going to retain or picture oh, any of it. So really? I just skip over it. Yeah. Oh shit, that's I know. that's wild to me. <laughs> <laughs> I I never really noticed chapter titles until uh the series He Who Fights with Monsters. Every chapter title is something that's going to be said in the next chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, was this book like that? Kinda. It had some things that were like okay. spoken. Um, but I, I've definitely read other books where it's yeah. always like a quote. Yeah, I love and, that. And that was cool because they were all quotes that made you think you're like, okay, this is what was said, four words. Now I can I'm starting to picture like what's gonna happen in this chapter it has to do with this because he said that. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like pretty cool. Yeah. It's funny too, because one of my favorite books of all time, uh Dragon Seed by James Maxey. Uh, all of those chapter titles are quotes from the book, but it, they're not like in quotes, but they're like part of a sentence that somebody yeah. will say. Uh, yep. And there's there's actually a chapter titled He Who Fights with Monsters. Mm. And it's part of like this big, like epic monologue that somebody gives that is like super like hopeful and empowering. <laughs> That's and awesome. and That's uh, awesome. I, I always love that chapter i always remembered the name of that chapter because of that monologue that's cool yeah that's cool so yeah then uh we kind of talked about the perspective changes but i thought it was interesting how you know we we get the first book it's all in third person it's jumping around to different povs and in this one it's just kyler and it's just vi and not only that but the framing narrative is that she is reading from a book that is Kyler's story. That is the main story that we're on, that we're hearing. Um, was that difficult for you guys? I feel like I, I, I've read a few books that have kind of done this in similar ways, like Empire of the Vampire or Blood Song, mm -hmm. and so I, I feel like I didn't have that much trouble with it. But I'm curious, I because I'm sure it stumped a lot of people. Uh, yeah, the yeah, first I... time it switched up. I did have trouble um, for sure. I, I texted you and asked you. Oh, I called you and asked you yeah, about yeah. it. Um, I'm not super good at catching different, like, you know, third person, first person changes uh, mm -hmm. when switching. And so I did get confused probably the first couple of times that it happened. But once you told me, I was, you know, if I hear Vi, you know, talking this way, we're reading. Right. But, and so once I got that down, it was fine. But I did for the first probably couple of hours. Yeah. I was confused for sure when it when it happened. Yeah, I hadn't started yet when Spencer told me. He was like, if you're confused about the timeline, like let me know. And I was like, just tell me what it is. Tell me, now, yeah. <laughs> tell me now. Yeah. Tell me now. And I think if I had just been listening, it would have confused me. But if yeah. I had been reading it physically, I think I would have been okay with it. But because yeah. I knew going into it, I had no issue with yeah. it. Yeah, sure. I've read a lot of books that are like that. So it wasn't like something new. Um yeah. so it made it a lot easier in in the physical books are vi's present day section like broken apart from kyler's um they're always like a new chapter and oh. so like basically anytime vi is talking to ariel Sister ariel, ariel yeah. or has like the book in front of her like it's very easy to, to know that, that's going on, yeah. that you're in the present because right. she's always there reading that book so yeah. it wasn't difficult going back and forth from like when she was in the story with kyler versus like when she's there reading the book yeah okay um so kind of going along with that i wonder if brent weeks will somehow continue to do this perspective like i i don't know how he would do it because Kyler's like literally Kyler's whole perspective that we were seeing ended as soon as the, the Kakari left his hand on the mountain. And so I don't know how Brent would write back in it to, for us to get a Kyler's perspective. So I we, almost, I almost wonder if the next book is pretty much all going to be Vi. Well, oh, that's what I thought it was setting it up. Yeah. For. Hopefully Vi until she either finds 
Kylar if he's alive, which yeah. which the Kakari says that he is. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it yeah. Does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. So when she finds Kylar, I'm sure it would go back. But yeah, I would agree. There's no way, unless there's some more crazy magic shit that we've never heard of that <laughs> happens, you know. Or or unless the the only other thing I could see him doing is going back to third person with Kyler, oh, and being like Kyler was hanging from the mountain and like mm-hmm. you know just kind of doing something that's like that. what i was thinking he could like go back to like the original style where it just jumps from person to person and right because i think like it fits the narrative in this book that kyler's missing or dead and you know this is how they were able to brent weeks was able to fit him into the story where it's like all right well read this narration of everything that he did um but so i could see him switching back to the original style instead yeah. of it just having it be what the kakari has recorded yeah because yeah. it's like in what situation would we ever get kyler writing in a book again you know no. like yeah so it, it it would have to i would think i i think it would have to switch to to third person from here well um, and at first i was like oh is it gonna go and just follow v from now on but isn't this called like the kyler chronicles or something so yeah he has to stay prominent in the story yeah. right yeah that that's that's one thing that kind of stumped me as well i'm like well the kyler chronicles refer to what is written in this yeah. book um oh, and so like so it's like are we not gonna get like is the book just null and void now that she's finished with it or um so i don't know i'm interested to see how he handles that um but i did think it was a cool way to you know, we for the final chapters, we get our final chapter with with Vi and she's like, Ariel, do you want to come with me? And she's like, yeah, let's do it. And they break out of the Chantry and they leave. And then we get one final scene with Kyler showing how he, you know, like got to the mountain and how he like let the Kakari go and everything. And the book ends as soon as the Kakari leaves his hand. And I thought that was such a cool idea because it makes sense like the he can only communicate to the Kakari if he's mm. touching it. And that's everything that he narrated to the Kakari is what's in the book. And so as soon as it leaves his hand, that's it. Yeah. The book's over. And so I, I don't know. I just thought that was a really cool way to like to end it with the Kakari, just like just that last point of contact and then it's done. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it kind of parallels Kyler's search for Durzo and now like V's searching for Kyler. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, that was weird, right? We didn't get any Durzo in this book. Okay, jumping ahead a little bit. I yeah. thought Rafaim, however you Rafaim. say it, Rafaim. I yeah. thought he was going to be Durzo. I was like waiting oh. and waiting and waiting for like him to be revealed to be Durzo. And yeah. when we got to the end and there was no explanation of where Durzo had been, I was kind of annoyed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I kind of think Vitruvius is Durzo. Ooh, like like the, interesting. the the head of the blue mages cuz when he was facing yeah. when when Kyler was facing off against him on that rooftop he like he thought something like that's something Durzo would say. Like Vitru- I forget yeah. what it was but Vitruvius said something he's like I remember I remember Durzo saying almost that exact thing and it's like wait a minute but then you have to ask like why would Durzo be this random blue mage but you know why why did he you know reincarnate why, why himself as he? Debbie yeah. yeah you never know so so yeah I don't know I'm eager to see where Durzo is I'm eager to find out if uh yeah if, if he's Vitruvius because I I kind of wonder if if he is if he is Vitruvius because that whole scene with Vitruvius was like he wasn't really like attacking Kyler in the way that would no. really kill him. Like they, they were almost like sparring. Like he was trying to get Kyler back, like in the zone, you know, like get your head in the game kind of thing. Yeah. Plus he knows about the black Hikari too. He's like, you know, your magic. I see you make yeah. a black second skin. Like, why can't you make wings for yourself? And Kyler's right. like, holy crap. That's a good Never point. thought of that. And it's like, also, how would he, how would he know that? You know? Right. Yeah. 100%. And, and also, Shame on Kyler for never thinking about yeah, making a wingsuit out of your Kakari. A, like exactly. Oh dude, my god. There's. I just have a feeling that as these go on, there's so much fucking shit that he could have done with the Kakari that he just yeah. never ever thought of. Right. So much. It's gonna be yeah. like it, it's so gonna be an, an immense amount of cool shit that he can do that's never been done. You know that yeah. he could have done at any time. 
Yeah. For instance, like mm-hmm. in the last series, like when he loses his arm, the yeah. Kari's like, why didn't you do this? Like it would have been fine. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I never fucking thought of that. Right. Exactly. He's too busy thinking about boobs, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Vice tits is all he yeah. cares about. It's, yeah. That's it. Hey. <laughs> It's pretty much all I care about too. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, um, I so I I thought it was kind of interesting that the theme of the book was about killing innocence, and Ky- Kyler kind of says this right from the beginning when he's about to like kill this child. Uh, that's like the lookout for Raphael. Oh, with the ball, yeah, okay. with yeah. the ball, yeah. yeah. And and he's like, oh, like I've never killed an innocent before, which I don't know if that's particularly true. Um, cause I feel, I'm sure that there's people that he's no. like accidentally killed in the first. He trilogy. says in, in another part of the book, he says, except for that time I had to kill that guard and like the, the girl he'd been sleeping oh. with hadn't left. Do you remember uh, that? Uh-uh. He says that in one part of the book, he was like, that was the first like innocent I had to kill. Well, okay. cause and, and his, okay. So let's, so Kyler's version of innocence is judging somebody and yeah. like, like I wouldn't be an innocent. I wouldn't be you know what I'm saying? saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I think he mostly just kills like murderers and rapists. Like I think that that's like what well, he I feel deems like the... is like uninnocent. I, I okay, like that's a good more... point. I mean, that's that's fair. I I do feel like it's more than that though. I think I he, I think he looks at you know he judges somebody's soul. Yeah. And somebody like can have a wicked soul and maybe never have committed a crime, uh, never yeah. hurt anybody, but still have just a wicked soul that's violent and is like ready to do damage. That's um, true. I don't know. They that. ask him that at one part in the book. They're like, where do you draw the line? Like, yeah. if they've done it or if they haven't done it already, but you could see, oh, somebody asks him, like, oh, just because they haven't had the opportunity. It's towards the end. Yes. Yeah. They say, does yes. that, uh, Janine, I think Janine's yeah. the one who says it. She's like, what? Just because you haven't had the opportunity? Like, I could still see that you would do it because she's like comparing yes. you to Logan right, over right. something. Yes, yes. And yeah. she's like, well, well, where do you draw the line? Like, just yeah. because they haven't had the chance doesn't mean they wouldn't do it if they that's did. Right. So yeah. that that's an interesting talking point. Do we want to talk about Janine? Uh, yeah, dude. What do you guys think of that? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. But they they took I, a route I was not expecting. Me too. Like, yeah, whatsoever. definitely. I knew that. I knew that after the thing with Dorian, there was just no way that that she would come out of that unscathed, right? Like there was definitely an issue, and the magic that happened at Black Barrow and all that. Like I knew from the start there was damage done to. I, I didn't know who, but there was damage done to people around Kyla yeah. or around his family mm-hmm. or whatever. And so, learning more about the children. Uh, her madness made sense, right? Because yeah. like at the first, she was just bad shit crazy, and nobody right. knew why. Like she was right. just insane. And then you learn that there's reasons why she is going mental. Like yeah. there's a reason mm-hmm. why. And so I, I felt like I just felt like I was like sad about it. I felt really yeah. bad for her because, um, I think she's a good person, just really fucked up. You know, yeah. like I think she really cares about people and. Um, I think her hate for Kylar is totally unwarranted, but only due to the fact that she's been twisted, you yeah. know? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm torn between liking her and not. Uh yeah. Yeah. It it was hard because she was um one of my like I, I don't even know if that's correct. I saying she's one of my favorite characters from the original trilogy makes her seem like she's in my like top three or something. She wasn't. Yeah. But I really, really liked her from the original yeah. trilogy. And then seeing her like this, all just like broken and mm-hmm. messed up. I was like, oh, man, she was like the strong one. Like she was yeah. like she was so like mentally fortified. And I, it really, really sucked to see her in this way in this book. And I felt really, really bad for her. And yeah, I'm I'm really surprised with kind of the way Brent Weeks went about writing her character in this one. But it was interesting. It was certainly interesting. Yeah. It, it put a twist on it that I was not yep. expecting. And, um, you know, you uh, and I have this in my notes somewhere, too, is that I left the original trilogy thinking like, oh, everything's happy now. Like they won. Like, yeah, everybody yep. it's is all good. Rainbows, it's, baby. It's all yeah. rainbows. Like there's so much hope and so much joy and Kyler and Vi are going to be together. I mean, like they grabbed hands at the end of the book at, mm-hmm. the, at the end of the third book. I'm like, they're together now. And then we get into <laughs> this 
fucking no they're not like not at all <laughs> and i don't know like it, it was almost like brent weeks being like no you dumbass you think my world is gonna end that way like that's yeah, what no. yeah <laughs> he's I like the same thing. <laughs> he's like i write dark shit idiot yeah. like <laughs> and i think but but i i think that the fact that the suspense was there because i yeah. thought the same thing was just also <laughs> like a very incredible like yeah writing crux i guess oh yeah yeah for lack of better words because it was like it was a trip dude yeah like learning no they didn't fix anything, dude. Right. They built a, they built a city. That was <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, they built, they built a, a city. city. That's all that happened. <laughs> Everything else is fucked up still. Oh, my God. It was such a brutal. <laughs> it was such a brutal realization. Yeah. Um, And, you know, you, you leave the third book thinking like, oh, like Janine is with Logan now. They're going to have this happy marriage. And then like you you get just a couple chapters in and it's like Janine is going crazy from her interaction with these with babies child, that have magical yeah, powers. Yeah, which are her kids. Like, come yeah. on, dude. Yeah. And, oh, man. And and even Logan is like, uh, wait, there's a scene where he's talking to the Empress. and Oh, yeah, when she wants him to leave Janine for yeah. her. Yeah, and, and there's a moment where Kyler's like, he considered it. You know what I mean? Like, he, like, well, I don't know if he I says- yeah. But but he he's he says it in a more roundabout way because he's saying like things are not going well at home and yes. Logan Logan could easily like marry the Empress and have a better life than what he's got now. Yes, and I, and so yeah, but but so, he would never. Yeah, but he he wouldn't. Yeah, but and, but but yes, you're right. There there was a moment when she asked where he he questioned his own morals. Right. Just for a second. And then he's like, no, you can yeah. attack me here. I won't do it just because not. And I know he loves Janine, but I yeah. feel like that was more of just Logan making sure he stays Logan. You know? Right. If you if you were to give up on that shit, that wouldn't be Logan anymore. He'd yeah. Be, he'd be gone to the wind. Dude, by the way, during that scene, how awesome was it? It was either that scene or like right before it was when uh, the Empress asked some asked him something about his time in the mall. And he's like, oh, you mean when I was a cannibal? Yes. And <laughs> she's like, uh, he's like, he's like, yeah, that, that wasn't a great time. <laughs> and what she say? Uh, she said something about like well done or something he's like actually i considered him very rare okay and yeah, like it was like that was, it. that was it that it was, was it. like oh shit that was it, dude. dude like <laughs> logan's a hardcore yeah. motherfucker dude yeah it was yep. great i love that yeah i actually was relieved when we learned that it was like the baby making her crazy because i'd kind of guessed it only yeah. because okay um, on the TV show the magicians something similar happened where mm. one of the characters couldn't go near his mother even from right after birth because yeah. he was a psychic and something about like him being near her literally made her crazy. Yeah. So because I had seen something of almost exactly the same situation, oh, okay. I did sort of guess that I was like, oh, this is going to be like Kyler's baby messing her up. Like yeah. just being in yeah. her vicinity. There was something that just like set off the alarm bells. So that when it happened, I was like, Oh yes. yeah. <laughs> nice. Got it. And we, <laughs> Uh, what the fuck happened to the other kid yes oh, my main question okay when kyler got there was one of the babies not already missing dude yeah when he got to the crib there was just one baby that got just stolen. one and i feel where like where the fuck is the other one but i i think talk about it i so I, I, no we never ever heard the rest of the story about the other child well I, they I'm, talked about the it, last but, page where they're yeah. like well the other child's still missing yeah, okay so, oh so it did confirm it did well, confirm that the other child's missing completely. So at the end, when the baby is in with the Chandra, they bring up that like, oh, well, the other one's like still out there. And uh, like, or maybe they say, I, I can't remember where it is, but it's right at the end and it's very briefly. Brought. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was under the impression for some reason that the other baby had been taken by like a nursemaid or something. And that Logan and had his other kid, but that, maybe okay, I'm wrong. See, that would make sense, but there was never like, and tell me if I'm wrong. I, but I, there was never need, any confirmation. Was we there? needed more no, info. He okay, says, okay. Raheem says at one point he's like, "Oh well, I wanted to keep them separate to like better my odds of something, like oh. you know, because if they're in the same place and you find well, them, like you're yeah, getting both." Sure. I think he very briefly says it at one point huh. but the whole time all kyler talks about is 
the, the, the one, one kid. baby. And the, right. reason, and the reason why is because there's there are two different kids and two very different magics, right? The magic yeah. that yeah. everybody's scared of is Kyler's child, the nullification. That's right. what they're yeah. terrified of. Yeah. So the other babies, like the other child, like made Janine peaceful, right? Calmed her down and made her feel. No, the other. No, that, oh, that was the was other Tyler's baby that made her baby. crazy. Okay. Yeah, because the other baby was giving her the magic. God, That's yeah, what it gotcha. was, the vision. Yeah. yeah. And so, so yeah, so I'm just wondering, I'm like, what, first of all, what power does the other baby have? What will he grow up to be, right? Probably like, like a Dorian, like a prophetic. Could be, could be. Yeah, that would probably make sense, I guess. But yeah. Oh, because it's Dorian's kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, makes yeah, perfect yeah, sense. Yeah, that's, that's Dorian's true. child. Makes none total of them. Sense. Are. <laughs> yeah, the other ones. The other ones not. <laughs> yeah. Tyler's kid is not Dorian's kid. So okay, right. okay. But I just thought it was weird. Like right after the children were taken. I forget who Kyler's relaying this story to, if it's Mama Kay or, and he never at any point says like, oh, well, one of the children was already gone when I got there. Yeah. Like he never says there was only one child in the room. And I kept wondering the whole time, like, okay, did Raheem take both of them and separate them? And that's mm. what they want us to think. Or did someone else get there first and take yeah. the one? So only the other one was left to take. And they don't, reference it again they don't yeah so don't know. i hope that the nursemaid took the other baby yeah like I was that, that intentional he's still at his family yeah I, that's it, you we it, don't know it yeah. almost it almost feels like it wasn't intentional you know like it almost feels like he forgot to like put it in there but i would i would hate to say that there's, about brent weeks yeah there's just no way that that yeah. was just a miss that he made you know yeah like, i would be like, really where... really surprised because we're we're all three of us right now are like I don't remember what happened to the <laughs> yeah. other baby. Yeah. yeah. So it's like what I thought I was gonna be the only one that didn't no, remember. No, I <laughs> don't. Dude, the second I think I that, put that in my notes. I said, yeah. "Where did the other baby go?" The second yeah. that Kyler got poisoned, um, with Vi, by yeah. Vi, yeah, uh, that was the last time I ever heard about that other child. Right. Super super weird. Super yeah. weird. Yeah, I think that's it. I think really there's one random time when Kyler in one of their like five standoffs, him and Raf Rahayim, Rafaim, uh yeah. Rafaim, uh, where he says something about it. He like I think he uh alludes to having taken the other one and was separating them to make it harder oh, for anyone to see, rescue them. But I, I hope that he didn't take the other one. Yeah. I, I I find it hard to believe that I would create something in my head that didn't well, happen. Well, no, no, like, no, no, I'm with you. No, no, I'm, no, no, I'm you. just saying, I I don't remember the specific quote, but yeah, I'm like 99% sure. positive that it's a throwaway line where he says it and I'm like, oh, is that, are we supposed to believe him or is he yeah, saying that so people right. think that he has both of them? So I do think at the end of the day, Brent Weeks must have bigger plans for it because. Oh, for sure, yeah. You know what I mean? That I don't other think kid's got a just, mission, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he would just like omit it without a reason. So, so here's a question. What do you think of, uh, of Rafim as a villain? I think he's a great villain. Cause I, I, great, I, mean, but I needed more. Yeah. yeah. Definitely needed more. I mean, I, he's like, he's like an alien. He's like, yeah. yeah. From, yeah. Where from did this he planet. come from? Yeah. What powers does he have? He fucking fixes, well, he fixes the Empress's lack of childbearing just by yeah. looking at it. Yeah. And he has oh, eyes that are like that, slits. Yeah. And well, he's, he, he, Kyler he, says that the, his eyes swirl, their blue eyes just start to swirl, and he just all of a sudden fixes her lack of being able to be pregnant. He's like, "You're you're late this cycle, but next cycle, you know, have sex with one of your bad? men." Yeah, something. It's well, yeah, I don't know. He's he's got the blue Kakari, and we know that the blue is like very different than the black because the black Kakari is like almost sentient, where the other Kakar, all the other Kakaris are like they're literally a tool like they can't like talk back Object. to you yeah. yeah but do you think that the blue because i thought the blue kikari was like a a weather you know dealing with water magic and air magic and stuff like that i don't know well Cause, and cause, where you know, did he, he get it think because... about the because he talks about the maelstrom the tassini maelstrom yeah that's where he thinks that the kikari came from that's right it was messing it was up with all that there, magic yeah yeah kyler says like oh he must have just bonded it because like, he wasn't right. able to fully control yeah. it so yeah. where did he just get it from yeah that's right yeah he did only recently it was a new thing for him so yeah he must be some sort of 
like not human kind of thing. Yeah. That's super interesting. Yeah. I needed, I wanted more on him. I really, I would have loved his point of view, you know, mm. to, to get his motivations and yeah. why he suddenly came out of nowhere. And I mean, he's there right from the beginning of the book. That's where yeah. Kyler's like stalking that one woman who made uh, the girl into like the living statue mm -hmm. and whatnot. And you think, oh, like, okay, that's the twist. Like we thought he was here for this one guy, but he's here for the woman. So for then him to become like the... Big. not protagonist but yeah, yeah the big bad the, the big villain bad. kind yeah. of bad, yeah. yeah that i thought that was really interesting how it kind of like came back full circle and to... he yeah the entire time that we have that character in the set he is so hard trying to get kyler to come to his side because he talks about he's like there is stuff coming that i need you like there's yeah. there's things happening to this world that like if you're not with me you know, well, he doesn't say that, but he's like, yeah. there's there's stuff coming that nobody understands that I only understand. And so yeah. part of me is like, is that bullshit? Or like, is he does he really know uh -huh. much more than, yeah, that something is coming well, that yeah. he's trying to battle and save the planet, you know, to to back that up. Yeah. They, they mentioned multiple times, too, that um that when they did when they did what they did at Black Barrow, yeah. they unleashed a whole yes, bunch magic. of magic. And he's like, that it's hasn't been going been on forever, and it's yeah. still like continuing to expand. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So and he said three. You're not going to have one. You know, once in a millennia attack coming. You have three coming. Yeah. Right. Um. So I think that's going to be really interesting to see, like, who these invaders, I guess, are that are going to yeah. come from another planet. Yep. Um. But how does he know? Did this? he say another planet? He, well, yeah, well, he, he was talking about like other like realities, like yeah, it was yeah, something completely Shit. different from where they are. Mm. Yeah, saying that basically others are going to come, and you Stuff guys are that's not never prepared. been to this world before is going to show up. Yeah, and yeah. they said from the beginning, like yeah. you don't know what you woke up by performing that level of magic yeah. that you did. Oh, oh shit. I definitely he, like, can't he calls wait him like it. ignorant. He's like, How could you have done that? Like, he, yeah, you know, because obviously they didn't have a choice. Dorian was there, but yeah, there's there's a potential massive plot point in that. Yeah, uh, it was a very sequence. um like you can't unring a bell moment. Yeah, like right. how dumb are you? Like yeah. you have no idea what you've set into motion For now. Sure. So yeah. I, I did want to know a lot more about that. So yeah. I guess and, we, and we will, I'm sure. I'm, yeah, okay. we, we will. We just yeah. have to wait, but. I don't want to. I want to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Me, neither. Me neither. Me neither. Yeah, I, I think he's a good villain. I, I think that the best villains are ones where you, you are so close to seeing their point of view. Like yes. you are almost yes. like you're so close because he says things like, like basically what he's telling Kyler is, sometimes you have to make the hard decision either save the one or save the many and it's like you know that's a thing that we've seen in the real world and in multiple fantasy yeah. books where it's like you have to sometimes you have to make that hard choice um well, and he so shows him by he does yeah. Yeah. Violently. Yeah. <laughs> Violently. Yeah. yeah yeah and so it's like you know don't get me wrong uh rafim is definitely like a bad dude but it's the kind of bad where it's like he believes that he's in the right, like he believes yeah. that he's doing the right thing. And I do you I love is? those. No, I don't think he's doing the right thing. Oh, see, I I kind of do. Challenged, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm interesting. I'm, you, I'm I very think, challenged on it. I think he makes very good points. Mm -hmm. And what if he is really trying to save them all? And yeah. like he knows how it can be done. And he's like, listen, we have to do this, this, and this but if from, we want any chance of surviving. From their worldly point of view, because they're only in their world, right? Like yeah. everybody's the chantry, everybody says that this is, you know, they don't believe it. It's bullshit. Like they yeah. they have to be lying. But what if he's not though? Right. You know, what if? Right. If it really is for yeah. all of their best interest. And mm -hmm. I have to say, he had me pretty convinced. There was really at no point where I was like, F this guy. Like, I can't wait for Kyler to take him out. I would agree. If anything, yeah. I was like, I want to know more. I want to know how to lie. <laughs> I need more information. Uh, yeah, sure. this thought process, because maybe he knows a lot we don't know, and he is right. You guys That's are the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I wasn't. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's fair. All right. Well, before we uh, before we go on to some of our like favorite moments and stuff, there one last thing that I want to say in our our general thoughts here 
is I was so worried when uh, when Mama K said that there was like this thing called the shadow oh, compass wow. and he had to go get it. I was like, is he writing a fucking MacGuffin into this book? Just some like <laughs> random artifact that Kyler has to go get to save the day and deus ex machina the story away. And uh, I was so glad to find out that like, Yes, there is a shadow compass, but that wasn't the point of like, like sh she didn't really send him to go get this like vague shadow compass, right? Like the yeah, the whole point was to get him to the ship where uh, his kid is. And so I thought that was done really well because I think like I I'm sure for a lot of people it was kind of like an eye roll moment. Like is Brent Weeks really writing in some random MacGuffin into his book? Like, come on. Then it gets to the point where it's like, ah, no, I was just like kind of fucking with you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I like that. <laughs> I was a little disappointed. I thought it would have been like a really useful thing to have. I was hoping he was going to find it and That's, then it yeah, would help him real. find Durzo or the baby, <laughs> anyone. Yep. So I was actually a little disappointed. I was like, oh, that would have been a really useful tool for him to have. <laughs> and I was, I was glad to find out at the end where Mama K becomes She's like, it does exist. Yeah. She's like, yes, yeah. Durzo gave me a list of artifacts that could yeah. potentially be the most you know, powerful and effective things that we need. And that was at the top of the list. So I was like, I'm glad yeah. that it's not just bullshit. You know? Right. Yeah. So maybe yeah. it will come into play. You know, exactly. maybe, maybe they'll find maybe that's it. That's where yeah. Durso really is. Could be. And, and, yep. For the compass. <laughs> and and see that that's the cool thing about like how he wrote this too, is because he subverted our expectations by not giving us the MacGuffin that we thought he was going to write the story off with. Uh, but it turns out that MacGuffin does actually exist. So if he does want to bring it in later, he can come back. Yeah, he, he can do that. And we won't feel like it's a MacGuffin because yeah. it's like, you know, usually a MacGuffin is something that happens in the first book where it's like this one thing can save everybody. If you just go find <laughs> yep. this magical item yeah. yep. um, and it, it gets really annoying. Like, I, I think the only thing that did it pretty well was like the Ember Blade. Um, I was just going to say, I was thinking in my head, yeah. literally lot of the ember blade <laughs> yeah um but you know we've we've seen MacGuffin since the beginning of fantasy like the ring yeah. from lord of the rings like they yeah. really they gotta you know take this ring up to the mountain like whatever so like MacGuffins usually really annoy me and i think it would have annoyed me in this book if it had been this thing that he had to go find deep in the ruins of some ancient city and it saves everybody because it's a you know magical what's it or whatever yep but because he subverted those expectations and he's like i might i might show you guys more about this later i thought that was done mm -hmm. really well i i like that a lot i mean i as you were saying oh if he had to go on this you know trip to find something in the jungles i was like oh i would read that yeah, yeah, I, yeah I absolutely, absolutely. I, I mean, it felt like a night angel book, but right. I would absolutely read it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, like Indiana Jones, Night yep. Angel. Yep. It made me think of like the Malice Darkblade series that I read, where it's it's very much like that. It's an elf who has to go into all of the deserted places of this planet and, and this find ancient things. Artifact. Yeah. yeah, but okay. I loved that. Wait, so what's it called? Malice Darkblade. Malice um, Darkblade. Okay. Yeah, it's like M A L U S. Um, I honestly, it was so long ago, and they might be like hard to find. One of those oh, okay. kind of like old series. Um, but right. I think it's part of the Warhammer. Yeah, Warhammer. Oh, okay. It is. Yep. Okay, I used cool. to really love the Warhammer Time of Legends series. Nice. Um, but yeah, that one part he has to like go on <laughs> the missions to get that's cool old artifacts, but um. I would have liked it, but I don't think it would have been a, a true Night Angel book if that yeah. had been the direction he had taken it in. Right. Um, all right. Well, we're kind of, uh, <laughs> we, we've had a really great discussion so far. I've liked everything <laughs> we've talked about. Yep. We are kind of running out of time a little bit. So is there any like favorite moments that you guys kind of see from this list or anything that you can think of uh, that you just enjoyed when you think back on the book? So, okay. So I've got one that I'm, happy about and also pissed about both emotions and that's when kyler has sex with bi 
Ugh, you didn't I, like I it? skipped over. No, I skipped what? over it. Yeah, okay. You guys so, are no, no, no. no, listen, crazy. listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> Shut your mouth for a second. Listen, dude. Okay, okay uh, cuz I'm I'm on board with you and I think you, Sam. I I love I was excited that it happened, but then finding out that it was a I was so fucking mad, dude. Oh, it yeah. It was all just a fucking sham. All of it was a sham. Well, I disagree, but oh, go ahead. Okay, so I the feelings weren't a sham. Yeah. She was she was told to do what she did. Yeah. Right? For purpose by the right. Shantry. That's right. what made me mad. Right. But I was glad that he I, Okay, here's what I'm glad about. I'm glad that Kyler finally finally not gave up on but finally let go enough of a lean to just right. be able to feel something like that again cuz right. he was fighting. He's like, "No, you're not a lean. Like I'm not doing this." Yeah. Over and over. It's like um, a lean's gone, dude. Lean's gone. Yeah. You, yeah. You, Either you suffer you suffer in sadness or you can get this one thing that will make you feel like a person for however long it took, whatever. But yeah, it, that that was it. I was just like, I was so stoked about it, but then I was like also so mad about it. And I'm like, dude, that's, oh, that fucking sucks that it wasn't like something that they both had where there was no situation, you know, nothing, yeah. no overarching societies that, you know, made made them do it. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sam? I don't know. It just felt like unnecessary at the time. And oh, I didn't think so. <laughs> I hate his thought process. He has just such a juvenile thought process when it comes to like, oh, boobs and like. <laughs> he does. Uh, That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it always feels like forced, even though like it's what he wants, clearly. Like he has to. Well, like, he's, fight yeah, he's fighting mental... it exactly. Always. Very violent fights in gets... his head. Yeah, it just gets to the point where it's like, all right, like, is this what we're doing? Like, he's going to torture himself for the hundredth time over something he wants. And I understand. I get it. But at the same time, like, I also don't care. But yeah. I just like, <laughs> kind of like at this point, it's a book. It's not real life. So like, get over yeah. it. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to hear about her anymore. Like, yeah. And then the fact that Vi was like playing him the whole time that really annoyed oh, me and i didn't so mad, yeah dude. i didn't understand when she like fell to his feet and like wrapped her arms around I his trying legs to, like, and... yeah pull his pants down and stuff like what the fuck, so I, I okay i, I was the... like who's writing this at that part all right like, spencer okay I, I, okay yeah, okay so it. i, I want to talk on both scenes i feel okay. like definitely the part where she like grabs his legs and stuff that was pretty gratuitous i'm not gonna lie but I think that I understand her thought process because if you if you think about Vi as a character, like she does not think things through in the in the way where she thinks about how others will feel about oh, a yeah. specific thing. Like she doesn't take others' feelings into consideration. She just thinks about she's she's not necessarily selfish, like she is, but she doesn't mean to be. Um, but in her head, her thought process behind that was the Chantry is forcing me to go sleep with uh, Raphael. Oh, Raphael, yeah. And I know that if I go do that and Kyler finds out about it, like at least- Never in, ever have this chance. I mean, yeah, at least yeah. in her head, she's like, he'll never want me again, and which, which couldn't be further from the truth with Kyler. Yeah. So I understand- how she's like she's like no like if i'm ever gonna have a moment with kyler like it has to be right well, and, now and she she and, even says the first time she says something like like uh she's like you know i i just wanted it to be my choice once yeah yeah and oh, i yeah, i felt okay. that maybe i felt I that. that i totally maybe I did that. Yeah. Okay. yeah yeah and, and so I yeah think it was just with vi the whole time i'm like get off the fence like pick a side i know yeah, yeah. i felt the same way and, yeah, yeah. I'm like, and I think that's what bothered me. It was like, yeah. stop acting like you're, yeah, you're being forced, but like you chose to follow yeah. these She's women. She's got half, and yeah. half a foot in and half a foot out for sure. Pick a side. I can only feel so much sympathy when you're putting yourself in this situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can say I felt the exact same way about that specifically. I was like, I don't know why the fuck she's with the chantry like i don't know why oh. she continues to be there i'm like she should just go run off with kyler and follow him around yeah but on the other side of it kyler wasn't really like accepting to that like i don't know if at the beginning of the book he would have been like oh yeah just come team up with me and we can be you know friends and you know just go do the night angel thing together 
So I think that she probably really felt like she had nowhere to go. But at the same time, it's like, for how many years were you like a strong independent woman before yeah. the chantry? Like Bye. you, you were yeah. on your own for years and years. Yeah. Like, why can you not just go, you know, go take yeah. murder contracts and the whole, the dude, the whole <laughs> buy and Veridiana thing is just perfect testament to what you just said. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was, dude, that was another thing. One of my favorite parts of the book was uh, where Kyler and Vi, I forget which scene it was, um, maybe it was right before like the actual sex scene or maybe it was right after it. Uh, but she was, she told him like, cause she was telling him the whole book. No, I'm Viridiana now. I'm Viridiana <laughs> yeah. now. And then at the end, it was like, I, I like it when you call me Vi. Yeah. And I was just yeah. like, ah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. and then, and then at the end for her to tell Ariel, call me by i i think i even sent gabe a oh, text and i was did. like um, she yeah. said call me by like <laughs> yeah yep. uh and so i i loved i love that i think that although i don't agree with hardly anything vi does in this book i think that her character continues to have a good character arc and i think yeah. by the time we get into the next book we're gonna see even more like character growth and at this point, I'm like, I think that she has significantly more character growth than Kyler does for mm. as many, yeah. for, for as many like stumbling blocks as she's come across. And yeah. however, like murky water, she's kind of had to wade through. I think that she still has like better characteristics than, than Kyler does. Mm. Um, so anyway, so about that one scene where she's like clinging to his legs. I do think that that was more of like a sad scene where she's like, I just want like this one thing yeah. before I am forced to do this other mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, because she has this idea in her head that Kyler won't want her after she's been yeah. uh, with Rafim, but she's been with a million other guys. Like, why would yeah. he care? Yeah. So um, I guess I didn't catch that. That it well, was but, but, yeah. but, but he, okay. he kind of, he, he does care though. Yeah. And he, he says it several times. He's like, he, yeah. It, the thought they, disgusts him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, there, that, there were a couple of times where like, he was thinking in his head monologue about it. And he's like, you know, like, you're going to go like pour yourself off to this guy because the chantry to like, the, I think the yeah. thought of her doing the, like, uh, maybe, maybe it's just for the chantry. Like, yeah. I don't, I think, I, don't I think that's the, I think okay. that's the sticking point. It's okay. not necessarily that it's not necessarily that she's had sex act, with like multiple yeah, men or whatever. It's, yeah. It's the fact that like you're doing this just because the chantry is yeah. making you like, that's yeah. so sick Yeah, that I sort of understand. But uh, then when we fast forward to like the actual sex scene, I, I don't feel like that scene was forced at all. And I, I'll admit part of that is just me like having wanted them to get together for so long. Yeah. But I think another part of it is, you know, we had seen this back and forth with them throughout the whole book where Kyler is struggling with, you know, I, I still love Eileen and she just died. Like, I feel like I would be desecrating her if I moved on that quickly, but then having Vi kind of come in and fill that space, even when they meet for the first time in this book where they're sharing uh, the poisoned wine, you know, he's very much feeling like, He's starting to open up to her again and it feels like they're friends. And then it kind of goes from that to be like, I, I think I really like Vi. And then it kind of goes back and forth to the point where like, even right before they have sex, he's thinking in his head, he's like, is this making love? Like, do we love each other? And yeah. kind of trying to like think through that well, whole and thing. Dude, and they even say when they're the first sex scene, they're like, I do not love you. And they both confirm, I yeah. do not love you. Oh yeah. That was I, really I awkward. Yeah. That was weird. Well, no, I, I, <laughs> I go ahead. I, nope. I have I have a quote. So uh, they get together. Let's go is my note. Um, and then I say, <laughs> then uh, Kyler says, I don't love you. And after a pause, she says, I don't love you either. And Kyler in his monologue, he says, and I believe her exactly as much as she believes me. Mm. And so they both yeah. know that they're lying about not they uh, they they very much love each other, okay. I, I would say. Oh, I believe that. I just thought it was so yeah. awkward for of them to say, I don't love you. Well, I don't love you either. Like right See, after. I, I felt, well, I think that was before. <laughs> and I felt like it was, it was Kyler's way of kind of 
rationalizing rash yeah rash pushing aside his thing for a lean it was yeah it was him saying like i love a lean you know i've always loved the lean but this is a way to get past that and do what i want to do with buy right right yeah Yeah. to make myself feel better about what i'm about to do (laughs) right yeah exactly pretty much yeah Yeah. pretty much and i'm i'm surprised the complicated discussion we're having on this This is really good (laughs) um but uh but yeah i i don't know i i really like that scene because i think that it was it's complicated, right? Because what if somebody told you, somebody who had power over you, they said, you have to go sleep with this person. And so you make all these plans to, and you try to seduce them and it doesn't work. But then later, and obviously not that much time has passed in the book, but Vi has always loved Kyler ever since like the end of the second book, she has been like crazy in love with him. And so like, what if it was something that you wanted to do, but it just so happened that this other person wanted you to do it as well? Yeah. Is it really her being controlled by the Chantry? Because I think at that point, like, either way, whether the Chantry wanted her to or not, she's always wanted no, to have no, this No, I, I totally agree. I think that you're absolutely right. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that the thing that I think about is, it's not not the act, but the afterward, the the amount of guilt she feels because mm. like she wanted to for sure. Like you said, she loves Kyler, always have. Yeah. But being controlled in that way and among the other things that she did, yeah, you know, which are fucked up uh for the chantry, like that's yeah. that's where the the problem lies, in my opinion, is just is that she is torn because she's like, you know, I could have done this by myself, which I would have, but I did it also because I wanted to, but the chantry had this huge plan that was in motion. Yeah. Um, and I had to deceive him and do this where it's like, you know, yeah. if they came together to meeting at a, you know, at a hotel somewhere or whatever, yeah. and, in, and they did it like that's, you it's know, different. in my opinion, quite a bit different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of, kind of forced in this, cert- like it, there's a time limit on it. Right. Yeah. It's forced in the sense that like, like I said, I just think afterwards, like yeah. in the moment, like they, they both want that and they're right. doing it and it's fuck everything else. Like who yeah. cares? We're yeah. doing this. But it's the afterward when the chantry is like, oh, so you mm-hmm. did the thing we told you to. OK, yeah. good. Yeah. Now you have to go do this. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, because he uh, wasn't aware of all that information. And he so. did. Yeah, yeah. 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 Did you guys think Gabe just mentioned it right after they have sex? Uh, she's out in the hall talking with uh, Ayaya or one of the other oh, sisters. Yeah. And she's like, oh, like, take this dagger and yada, yada, yada. And like, he can obviously overhear them. Did yep. you guys think that that was, I, I thought that that was a plant for sure. Like that they were like, that it was rigged, you know? I wouldn't, dude, with the sisters, that, yeah, absolutely. That would not surprise me at all. Yeah. Cause, was, I cause... didn't think it was just because V comes in at one, Vi comes in at one point to like check on him make, and make sure make he's sure still he's sleeping. Asleep. Yeah. So that was the only reason I didn't think it was a I, sign for him to hear. Yeah. I really feel like the levels of deception that the Chantry has in place like oh absolutely because like once you get to the end you're like dude there was so much more going on that i ever realized like there was like even to where you get to her like the kakari comes out you're like all right there was a whole different plan in motion than what was originally thought which is the point like that that's what made it an awesome book because i Mm -hmm. didn't i wasn't sure you know yeah i mean i wouldn't put it past him at all to have gone that far (laughs) exactly (laughs) they they'll go to any lengths that's the thing about the chantry man it's that's why they're scary is because they don't they're give scary. a fuck. They will do <laughs> yeah. whatever it takes. Kill yeah. kill 10,000 people. I don't give a shit. Give me mm-hmm. this thing, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it helps them, absolutely. That's right. Yeah. No. All right. Well, we got a lot of mileage yeah. out of that Vi and yeah, Kyler discussion, which I'm glad we did because that's like obviously what I wanted point, to talk right? about yeah. the most. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm glad we had a lot to say about that. Um, obviously, you know, we're not gonna get through like even a quarter of these notes so if you guys just want to pick things that you know just like a few more topics or something that you guys were Um, interested in i thought the way that the empress ruled was really interesting would maybe be fun to talk talk about about how she rules over um so she celestia she's the empress she came into power at 16 and how do you say it alatera alatera yeah or alatera um has two capitals and so she can only rule one at a time so she sets it up with it's not like a competition but it's like a party at kind each or, one or it's, like, what's, it's like a blind date almost yeah you know? like yeah. she just like finds the best suitor and she's like all right yeah. you can be king of the north 
Yeah, and so the day before she leaves for the other capital, the night before they host the huge party, and at the you move up the levels yeah. throughout yeah. the night, and right. it's more exclusive the further you go. And then you get your envelope at the end, and it tells you if you're staying where you are or if you're leaving with her. And I thought it was interesting how she would split couples up. You couldn't um, like appeal whatever your envelope said. Right. And then how she either picks someone to rule as a regent or a king while she's mm -hmm. gone. And if you're a king, then you're also her consort at the yeah. same time. And I right. thought that was like really interesting. And like she started so yeah. young at 16 and it took her, what did they say? Like six years to get rid of all her father's old advisors yeah. and yeah. to be running it and i thought that was funny when kyler first sees that room that she has on the ship that's so opulent and overly decorated and she's like this is what like a decade of getting rid of things has gotten me down yeah, to. Like, yeah. oh god yeah what did it look like before but i th just found that whole concept so interesting of how she kept her power and made it a game that kept all the lower people busy so she could do what she needed to do yeah if if you like that, then you would definitely like King Stark Tidings because there is a Ooh, really. I'm gonna write it down. Yeah, it's it's easily it, it's my second favorite series of all time, next to Dresden Files. Um, but there is a a country called Lon Laresh that is ruled in a very similar way, and there's like this. It's almost like a game of chess, the way that mm -hmm. the politics work. Uh, and it's, you know, ruled by these women who do a very uh, kind of similar thing to what the Empress is is doing here. I, I think mm -hmm. you'd like it a lot. Definitely. I'm going to look into it. I, I'm going to pass it over to Gabe. What is this type of government called? Oh, my God. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, OK, so I, and I know that I'm ignorant, not the smartest person. No, you would got it, it. You got would it. Would it be a, well? It's either a matriarchy or a monarchy. No, it's a matriarchy. Yeah, so what's yeah. a monarchy? Monarchy is ruled by like a, a king, a family. And queen and, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so because yeah. patriarchy is ruled is by man. king, man, and then yeah, matriarchy. Okay, cool. yeah, I got it. I got <laughs> it. <laughs> we, yeah, there, is it a matriarchy? There was because this, uh, I don't think it can only be a woman ruler. Didn't her father rule before her? I mean, now it's a matriarchy. If yeah, she's, oh, if she's oh, ruling. Yeah, for sure. She, yeah, for I mean, ruled. like she she's in charge and she's without a doubt calling all the shots. So, yeah. but go ahead and you can tell her about the joke. Yeah, it, it. We just have like this inside joke at this point because when we were doing uh, <laughs> one of our Sanderson books, I think it was the Secret Project Number Two. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, was we we one. had like this whole. This whole scuffle I kept, over the difference between a matriarchy well, no, and a patriarchy. I, I kept saying, I kept saying, like I knew that it was a patriarchy, but I kept saying matriarchy, and so yeah, I was like, exactly. This matriarch and Spencer's like, hold on, what does a matriarchy you, have to do with? What are you yeah, talking? that's what you said. What does a matriarchy have to do with this? And I was like, oh, I didn't mean that. I'm a patriarchy. God damn it. Uh, it's okay. Oh. It's like a tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was talking to uh, our our fourth co-host the other day, Mick. And I was like, dude, whenever we get shirts made, I want one that just says <laughs> pure matriarchy. <laughs> I think awesome, that'd be dude. so funny. It would be so that funny. That is great. That, I would buy that merch. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so earlier in the book, Kyler is able to hold his son. He doesn't know it's his son at the time. Um, but he's looking at this baby and he's like, babies are ugly. Like, why does yeah. anybody think that, you know, babies are cute? Um, and then later when he's like on the ship, like about to kill his son, he's like, the child was so cute. He's like, yeah. Yeah. he's like, the baby was so adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Oh. Um, but then jumping back to earlier in the book, when he's first holding him, uh, Kyler wonders if somebody ever held him like this and that uh, he, he mentions how like the gangs or like the guilds of the Warrens, like they don't take in newborns. So because they can't they can't provide they can't yeah. give them anything yeah so somebody would have had to have taken care of him mm -hmm. until he was old enough to go into the guild yeah but he doesn't know who that person is and so it makes me wonder like yeah what the fuck was he doing before he was in the guild like yeah and I don't think the original trilogy ever answers that like who were his parents and I don't I think we ever get do any I just of those not answers. Remember that, or did we not get answers to that? I we never got answers to that. I don't think we we definitely never learned who his parents were, but 
I but that makes me wonder like if uh, after four books we haven't learned anything if it's really just meant to like not mean anything right. yeah it seems like a really long con right yeah <laughs> well you know what I mean to like keep us guessing for this long yeah that... and I've had books like that where you know they play up oh who are their parents and you find out later like they were actually nobodies and it really right. meant nothing yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah that's true but yeah, I just thought that was that was funny because like Kyler was he's like, I wonder if anybody ever held me like this, like looking at me and thinking that I was like just an ugly baby or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, how shocked were you? I, I was very shocked that probably my biggest shock of the whole book was that he didn't kill his son in the end in that Vi had, you know, glamored him yes. to like carry a bundle. And after reading the pain he went through carrying what he thought was his son's rotting corpse. And then how he says like, Oh, I'm not going to bury him here. They can, they can smell the rot I'm carrying the decay. And so he walks further to, and then to find out his son wasn't dead, like to put someone through that kind of pain. And for him to have had to make that hard decision where he's like, all right, my son's better off dead than yeah. alive in these people's hands and he really is alive oh that's it's, that it's, killed me it's almost unforgivable and yes it's it's like i i think that the only saving grace will be is that if it comes out that vi was like trying to save him from himself like if like if, if it's spun in a way where it's like there is no other way that we could have gotten the kid off the ship other than by it happening this way um uh, other than that, she's just a chantry pawn and yeah. she just completely fucked over like her only friend in the whole world for the chantry. Well, and now his son is in the hands of the chantry. So, yeah. oh my God, is that really any better than being in anyone else's hands Dude, that we've met that, so far? <laughs> that conversation was so brutal at the end where Vi is talking to the the speaker is stereal mm -hmm. yeah. she's like oh yeah we have the child and she like brings out the kid and she's like he'll stay with us for a while and if we deem it appropriate he'll go back to logan's parents but at that point he'll be old enough to recognize like me as the mom and so like I, like why would i send him back to logan at that point and i was just like oh my god like they're never so, letting that kid out of their clutches. No, never, 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 never ever, ever. Yeah, Not on purpose. And so I, I believe that she is leaving the chantry now to find Kyler and basically like throw herself at his feet, saying, "We have to get your child back." And I think that's the only saving grace for her. I don't know i don't know if there is a saving grace like you made him go through yeah who knows if she if she were to find him and to tell him this i'd be like you let me think this whole time that i killed my child like yeah, yeah I'm related. they're there's, still alive there's nothing, but there's nothing coming back now you're also telling me that my child is in the clutches of like the people that i hate the most uh so, so to be fair right like she didn't have a chance like even though she did all the stupid shit on the ship that she did afterwards there was no chance to tell him because she didn't know where he was mm -hmm. but now that she knows where he is she's like fuck it i'm going and so i i kind of wonder if that'll be the one thing that saves her a bit but i don't i mean I one don't of the know. other sisters said to her she was like what do you think he'll forgive you for glamoring him to think he killed his child and i was like yeah, oh, she kind of has dude. a point yeah it's <laughs> It's going to be. Like I, I uh, understand why you did what you did. I'm a very objective person. I sure. can I can see and understand, but it doesn't mean like I can forgive it or not have feelings right. about what you did. So, yeah, I I think her and Kyler had finally maybe made a little bit of progress. And this is like going to set them so way far back, back, way back. Oh, God, it breaks my heart. I know that really I was really surprised by that. Because at first I was like, no, there's no way he killed the baby. Yeah. And then when he well, like buries him, I'm like, oh, he killed the baby. And then you're like, oh, wait, he didn't kill the baby. Yeah, I, I, I fully believe that he killed the baby right from the beginning because to me, this book seemed darker than the previous trilogy for the most part. 
And so I was like, oh, maybe this is just the direction Brent is taking the books now. Like maybe he's killing children. <laughs> I don't know. And so <laughs> you never and, know. Yeah. I'm like, maybe we're just going super dark here. Let's do it. Uh, and so I thought that he really like there, there was no part of me that was like the baby is actually alive. Cause like, how could he do that? But then when it came out at the end, I was like, oh, thank God like <laughs> yeah thank God. yeah he got me he got yeah. me on that one yeah. I will give him all the credit for that <laughs> yeah sorry Gabe I, I cut you off earlier no I I don't have I don't have a whole lot on this just because I don't really quite know how I feel about it yet sure um, but what I was gonna say was that there there's at least gonna be a book of time between yeah Kyler and by oh yeah there's no way there's no way that we will get anything from Kylar in the next book. Like romantically? Oh, so like a no, no, like, like period. Like, I mean, oh. we'll, we might get content from him. Oh yeah. But oh, okay. he won't, he won't even, if Vi tells him what happened, get the fuck away from me. Stay oh, away yeah, from yeah. me. I hate you. Yeah. I hate you with all my heart. Yeah. So there won't be any of them together for sure. No, I don't yeah. think so. I think this will be too much. Yeah. It would take then something really huge to happen later on, but I don't yeah, know yeah, there'd have to be a big trial that they both go through together, forced yeah. or not forced, whatever that could rectify that. But yeah, I I'm... mean, she could have helped herself if she stole the baby from Chantry and brought the baby to yeah. Kyler. That could or be even like back a to Logan, like that thing. would have been yeah. solid too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that would have been probably the only thing I could think of where I'm like, all right, well, if she showed up with the baby, it would be different. But if she's just gonna run and leave the baby behind to go find Kyler, he's gonna be like, oh, you were telling me you were with the child and you just left it to come kill me, break my heart even further. You yeah, know what maybe. I mean? <laughs> although, although I do think, um, I, I see what you're saying, but I do think that she could explain it like, I don't have the power to just take the child from the chantry. Like, I needed to come get you to do that. Um, and he'll be like, I left you the Kakari. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, I could see it going either way. Yeah, yeah. And, and speaking of which, Vi has the fucking Kakari, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. She has it. Oh, I'm so excited. What I think she could do more with it than Kyler ever did. Yeah. You know, I feel like he always had it and never like thought of the potential it never could really bring it, him. Yeah. 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 He seemed yeah. content with just like letting it give him the powers it did, and that was it. And I'd yeah. be constantly thinking, like, what more can I do with this? Right, yeah. right. Like I I'm so excited to see. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're good. I, I just so I, I heard you say this earlier, kind of, and so this is I was challenging myself to even say this because it sounds really fucked up and really demented to even think this and mind you again i was happy about it too but when we found out that it, he didn't actually kill his child i was like man that took that took the heartbreak away from me like i was like i was so much more enthralled when he yeah. actually did kill his child i would agree yeah. like it was more i was more invested and then the second i found out he wasn't dead i was like ah oh, dude there was a part of me yeah. That mind you how fucked up this is. Sure. Kind of mm -hmm. just floated away. And it was like, yeah. all right, that didn't mean anything. But right. it was like a really surreal and powerful moment. Like, dude, he, yeah. Oh my God. The fucking the fucking way that he describes it when he, he stabs his child through the brainstem. Yeah. The Kikari stabs a newborn through the brainstem, dude. Yeah. Like it's and he the says most... he like convulses in his arms. Yes, and then something. just then just dies. It was the most visceral, disgusting thing I've ever read in my entire life. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Like it was just violently disgusting. And so I don't know. I just was weird. Like when I found out that he wasn't, I was like, Man, you Yeah. Like why didn't why didn't you just like stick with that? That yeah. And I I would agree. Yeah, I okay. agree. Because that's where I felt like I was like, Am I a fucked up person for saying that? But yeah. Well, I, and then I thought the twist would be that, like, oh, the other child was actually his. Yeah, or right. Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly okay. right. Yeah. All right. I feel better now. I thought yeah. I was yeah. the only one <laughs> who felt like a fucking asshole. <laughs> no, I I felt the same way. It was like, okay, okay I had just gotten used to the idea that, like, yeah. you know, while like, it sucks, he kind of did the right thing in the moment because he yeah. didn't want to yeah. hand his child but over. But there's so much power behind the fact that he did yeah. what he did. And then knowing yeah. that that power is false, right? Like there's there's nothing there, well, right? And now he oh. also knows that about himself. So even if he finds out that the child isn't dead, right. he, knows he knows that, that he's he did it. He did yeah. it exactly, and that's right. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like 
you know, if you're going to do it, fucking do it. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he did. And he yeah. did. Like he yeah. did. But just knowing that it but was like for on, nothing. But like on on Brent Week's side, like if, if, oh, if, if you're yeah. going to. OK, yes. Like, yes. If, if, if you're going to do this massive thing that's so yeah. violently important, stick with it. Yeah, yeah do it. <laughs> yeah, do it. Don't come back on it. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. that was a, a crazy, a crazy scene. Yeah, I was um, I was like shaking, dude. It was yeah. like the most like and I get you. There's like rape is violent. It's all violent. But when you think about a newborn like new, yeah just, like a child that cannot do anything nothing yeah being you know killed like that it was just like really, really and it wow. was so graphic yeah it was so graphic. It, you know perfectly and he does so. he does say like he's like the knife went in through the back of his head cut the yes. brain stem it was painless is what he yeah. says it was painless but i'm still like oh dude that's just so visceral yeah, yeah. so visceral yeah mm -hmm. and, and there there's the note that i have somewhere where it's like the the Kakari is telling Vi or Vi is saying like you know wasn't yes, wasn't Kyler yes. your friend or something he's like um so Kyler was at the end of a ship holding his baby and he begged forced, me to kill it he yeah. for forced and demanded me to Stab murder a baby yeah he's like is that something a friend does yes and then and then uh, he and then he goes on to say like this is like. Like this is what this is the punishment that he deserves yeah. living yes. with this. This he's is like what this, he gets. He, he's like you know the the Kakari is justice. Like the yeah. black the the this black is the Kikari justice is, that Kylar needs. Yeah, yes. this is what he deserves. Yeah, right. He doesn't deserve to like you know die and Torture come back himself. or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. he had, he does like the knowledge every, of what he did is justice enough. Right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So. But it's like, look at how we think of it, Gabe, where it's like, we read this and we found out the child was alive and we're like, uh, what? So yeah. imagine Kyler going oh, through that. Oh, I couldn't even imagine. Child could not even imagine. Killed. Yeah. So uh, it's just, how could he ever forgive Vi for that? No, there's just, no way. I don't see it. I, I don't agree. Think there's any I, don't, coming back. I don't think it's possible. I agree. Yeah. yeah. The the interesting thing, too, is uh, kind of on a like a magical note the kakari devoured the child's talent magic that's and, right and so and, he didn't even have yeah. to kill the child right Ooh, that's yeah. dark yeah that's dark. the kakari ate it and why didn't why didn't he think of that because the because kakari's never think... done that before well the, the, the kakari devours magic all the time, all the time. yeah but remember yeah. the waterfall thing yeah and... yeah that that's that's true but the kakari has never taken away like the from how it was explained it sounded like the Kakari took away the child's talent. Magic. Like he, okay. He doesn't have it anymore. That, that's what Vi says after yeah. when he's okay. All right. Right. Yeah, that's fair. And so or it's maybe like never that's taken it from like something living before it. It always kind of I think I think I think Spencer means like never like ripped the talent out of somebody that could use it. Right. Right. Like yeah. he's never been able to like stab anybody and just rid and them of magic talent. forever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now you guys do have a point where it's like he could have wrapped the kid in a Kakari ball, you know, and, <laughs> and prevented that and magic from, from escaping. From ever, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, there's that. But I think that, I think that the reason why that was never thought of is, be, is because he was under that compulsion the entire time, the, the dagger. Right. Like, the dagger made him think these thoughts, not, you know, not intentionally, but like it, it was like, what did the sister, um, Arabelle, Ari, whoever the sister is in the library that's nice and we like Ariel. Her. Ariel. She said, you know, she was, she said, I went and done my research. I was, I looked for the person that was the maker of this knife and I talked to her and there was this and this and this. And she says like the, 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 the knife itself is like, there's a term for what it does. It's like, it's called like, you know, the, de it's a deceiving oh, knife. The right. greater it's a, deception spell. Yeah. Okay. That was it. And yeah. so, so mm -hmm. the first one, the first thing she called it was like a greater like conception or like it was a positive. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 But right. then she and says, she, like, no, it's really a them. greater deception. Like yeah. she says, it's not what it, what they say it is. It's greater it, illusion it, it, and greater, greater deception. illusion. Yes. Yeah. Thank there you. you. That's okay. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so that was like, that was in my head was just the chantry, right? Like that's yeah. just the chantry mm -hmm. painting this idea like, oh, it's, it's an illusion. Know, it's an illusion. It's all good, but no, it's it's lies. It's all mm -hmm. it is is lies. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That was just like holy crap. Yeah. All right. Well, we're we're kind of at the end here. I I have a couple of uh, little tidbits. So we we talked about Rafim's kind of sick game that he makes Kyler play. Yeah. 
And during this time, I, I think it's Raphim that's telling him there's this blame shifting that both Kyler and Logan do. And I thought this was an interesting, um, it wasn't like a theme throughout the whole book or anything, but it definitely was a little bit of a theme in the previous trilogy. And I've seen it in other like assassin books specifically is that the assassin is always wanting someone else to make the decision. Like I just get my contracts and I follow the contracts. I kill the person. It's just a job. And so Rafim is telling Kyler about how both him and Logan do this, where, you know, Logan says a name, Kyler goes and kills that name. And Logan is able to say, I didn't physically kill anybody. I just said a name and I had my assassin go do it. My hands are clean, right? Mm -hmm. And then Kyler is able to moralize it where he's like, I just honor what the king tells me. Like the king tells me to go kill somebody. I do it and my hands are clean. I didn't make the decision. I'm just doing what my king tells me. And I think that that's such an interesting thing because even Rafim says it's like this vicious cycle where both of you are blameless, but both of you aren't. And like it's you're- a cop out. Yeah, it's like both of you have like this cop out. And man, I or thought you that- you can blame it on the other person. Right. I'm like, dude, that is so good because I had never thought about that before. And one of my favorite like assassin fantasies is the, uh, the Fallen Blade series. And this is something that the main character, Errol, deals with a lot because he had this this god that would tell him who to kill and the god knew like this person is bad they need to die otherwise they're going to start like this big war whatever and so he had these like divine contracts from his god to go and kill these people but then the god died and he's like like i how am i supposed to assassinate anybody now like i need somebody to tell me what to do and throughout the series you see him latching on to like various people that will be like whether they're a king or a queen or a princess or whatever and they need somebody assassinated he always justifies what he does because it comes down from somebody else and so i just love this theme and like roguish kind of assassin fantasy uh where there's just like this blame shift happening all over the place I I can't say that I would think any differently than either Logan or Kyler, like, you know, in these grim, dark type of situations or in war, like there's certain people that need to be taken off the board. And like, how do you do that other than the way that he does that? And so it's tough, but like, I just, I love the, like the theory behind this, I guess. No, that's really interesting. It's almost like a, like a paradox. I hadn't really thought about it before where, Kyler and Logan can both sleep at night you know it's like what the left hand is doing the right hand you know one of those type of things where they're able to shift enough of the blame where they can both do what they have to do but feel like it's not my fault it wasn't my decision it's I'm not responsible for this you know I had to do and I think that's a cop-out like okay like you chose to follow him um, but I thought it was interesting where, like, you know, Kyler found out later that Logan actually did want him to go and do that killing from the beginning of the book. And it had really been set up that way, even though he thought he was going as fast as he could to do it before the decree came out where you couldn't kill. And right. that mental gymnastic he did to make it OK for the killing that he had to go do. And so that that's really interesting. I, I'd never looked at it that way. And right now I don't think I can unsee it. And it plays mm-hmm. a much larger part than I would have thought. So right. that's really, that's really interesting. I would have never come up with that on my own, but yeah. I, I have to think about that some more. That's same. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it's kind of really cool. Yeah. And then I can't find it in the notes right now, but uh, Vi hugging Uli. Uli comes um, in the door. And this is like, you know, nine months or so after, or maybe more than nine months uh, after the events of the original trilogy. And Uli comes in. And before, like, Vi was always like, you asshole. Like, she never really liked, I mean, she did like Uli, but she like pretended like she didn't. And now they're like openly hugging and she like, it, it even goes on for like several minutes to describe that Vi is like squeezing Uli, that they're like embracing. Yeah. Um, and it's like, they're like really, you know, kind of sisterly or however you want to yep. look at it. Like 
I don't know. I, I thought that was so cool because it talks, it, it speaks to how far Vi has come. It speaks to how far like Uli has come, even though we don't really see her a lot in this book. And okay, so well, question, what do you think that Uli wanted her to, es- Vi to escape with her and Vi said no and ran her out of the room and now she is going to be escaping. Will she take Uli with her or is she going to abandon I, her? I have to, I cannot imagine a world in Where which- she leaves her? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I cannot imagine, especially like, not only Vi, but like Brent Weeks, I cannot imagine him not having Uli in the next book to the point yeah. where like she's part of the travel party. I, I have to imagine that he will write it in where Vi <laughs> takes her with her. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't I don't know what else there is. I, I think that maybe at some point in the future, and uh you're you're welcome to join us for this, Sam, but maybe maybe Gabe and I'll do like a part two where we go through like really specific scenes. But I'm down for that. Yeah, I think we're, we're almost at two and a half hours. So we might as well kind of <laughs> start to close up. You up know? Yeah. I, I, but I do, I do think that we had like a lot of good conversations that we covered like most of our bases here. We talked about the major, uh, you know, plot yeah. points and, you know, Kyler, I, I guess one of the, one of the last things to talk about is Kyler hanging off of a, of a mountain. And, Cliff, and while the, the birds or the racks, I mean, Spencer have been playing a game where there's racks or like violent birds that do yeah. <laughs> attacking him. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the other thing. So he's hanging off this mountain. Well, he, so he like, he like hung himself over cause he's trying to like hide. his arm, right? Yeah. Well, he's no, got he's like trying one to, arm to, and a metal brace. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to like bury, he's digging a hole into the wall to put the Kakari in there. Right. Like he's trying to like hide. He like, he doesn't want the Kakari to see where he's at. No, right. no, okay. He, I he read the... it that way first. Okay, okay, okay. But I and, think he was using it to. Yeah, so he. Right? Yeah, he might have been using it, but he also had the Kakari in like a pouch so it couldn't see where they are. But he was digging. Uh, oh, yeah, with the Kakari, he was digging a hole into the cliff to put his metal brace like... into that holds his arm. Oh, yeah. I read it the okay. same way first okay. two game okay. where I was All like, right. wait, he's sticking the Kakari. Okay. The way it's worded makes you think that. Okay. I thought yeah. the same thing. Good deal. I'm not going yeah. crazy. No, <laughs> I read it the same way. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, so what? Is he just going to hang from this cliff forever? Like, is that his plan is to, to punish himself? And I, I thought it was like a suicide thing. That's about, what like, I thought. Yeah. But he, he, he can't suicide. die, though. Well, he, he can... Not if he if he doesn't have the Kakari, he can fucking die. I had a question. Without the Kakari, does that mean he can Dude. now die? I couldn't no. remember how that all right. worked. Okay, explain box. that to me, because I that does not ring any bells in my head at all. Yeah. Yeah, because he's, he's an immortal now. So anytime he dies, he will go back to the wolf. Because the, the first time in the sanctum the wolf gave him two options he was like either you go through the door that basically takes you to either heaven or hell or you go to like immortality oh and he said until you're ready like yeah. you're not gonna okay I and so now. whether whether the kakari is in like direct proximity to him or not he's still immortal the only time that it ch- ever changed for durzo was when the Kakari unbound from him, like permanently unbound from Durzo's spirit or soul or whatever. Oh. Um, so when the Kakari goes into Vi, it's, it's still bound to Kylar? That's the question, right? It's like if she, like, obviously she can talk to it, like it talked to her. And she uses it. She yeah, used, she yeah. used it to open the, the latch. So, but it doesn't say anything about her because there's like a very specific scene in the Night yeah. Angel trilogy where he binds himself to the I do Kakari. remember that, yeah. And like we haven't seen anything like that from Vi. Hmm. And so interesting. Yeah, like what like does would Kyler have to un like somehow unbind himself from the Kakari for Vi to then bind herself to it? Or like how would that work? Um, so I guess the the easy answer is that Vi is not immortal just because she has the Kakari. But okay. But, that's fair but that's kyler fair. is immortal because he's bound to it he went through all that shit with the wolf and stuff yeah interesting gotcha so i mean at least that's and and no no that 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 does that does make sense 
the last thing you just said, since Kai is using the car, she's not um or not Kai. Bye. Bye. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Um <laughs> Using the Kakara, she's not immortal because that 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 cleared things up because I do I do think that there's probably a massive difference in that because like like you said most cars are just a tool but the black one is sentient right it's got got more to it but Vi just you know she's it is just a tool to buy right right she's just using more. it yeah yeah it's not like uh the thing you had with Kyler so that makes sense yeah I don't know it's it's interesting because like. Then you have to ask, you know, the, the whole reason, apparently he's like, yeah, I don't want to like burn myself or anything like that, because I don't know if that'll actually, you know, kill me for good or whatever. But like, wouldn't he starve on the cliff? Like, wouldn't, wouldn't um, he, wouldn't he starve and he, die or wouldn't the starve, birds pick but him if, apart? But yeah, but if he can't die, then he'll just keep coming back well, while yeah, killing people say, that he loves. Yeah, killing people see, that he loves. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's the whole reason he didn't burn himself though, because he's like, if I burn myself and I die, then somebody I, I love is going to die. Yeah. Somebody Which I love is like, right die. now it's like Logan, Vi, his kid Durzo maybe mama K, maybe. there's like five oh, of them dude yeah five. well no he thinks this kid is dead yeah so. yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah still but like one in five like that's you know yeah if i loved so, ten thousand people maybe yeah but yeah but yeah so it's like yeah aren't, aren't the birds gonna pick him apart on the cliff and and kill him and and then he'll die and one of his loved ones will die like yeah, I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. But <laughs> yeah, I have the same questions you do. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, any other any other favorite moments you guys would like to close out with? I I have a quote. It's not like particularly like profound or anything. It was just something that I kind of liked. Um, but if you guys have any, if you guys have any like final favorite moments, we can go through those. Um, I, think, I think mine I... plays off yours, Spencer. If it's the one I think it is. Um, mine was right before. If you're talking about the one where he f- hits himself on the wall, I think it's like I, one I of your know. first quotes. Um, I just thought it was funny when he goes, no problem, right? I got this. And then he's like, I'm going to die. I thought that was like a really funny <laughs> moment where he's like, I got this. I got this. And he's like, never mind. I'm going to die. Wait, wait, <laughs> like, when was climb- this? So when he's climbing on the wall in the house in the beginning, and then he like hits his oh, testicles yeah. on the thing. That's yeah, what I thought yeah, you yeah. were going to talk about. And then it's like, what <laughs> saves him from like falling off the wall? But I just thought it was, it was a very Kyler moment of him to be like, yeah. I got this, I got this. And then he's like, I'm going to die. This is nuts. Yeah. Like, I'm going to die. Dude, no that, that went from like no danger to absolute danger so yeah. fast. Uh, that was so And funny. that was right in the beginning. I thought it was funny. It really yeah. like brought you back into like who Kyler was. Right. Yeah. 100%. And like the, so the, the quote that she's referencing is, uh, there's something mystical about testicular pain. Oh yeah. I read, yeah. <laughs> you you want to know how my, mo- how my master taught me to ignore it? Go ahead and guess because I'm not talking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that was really funny yeah Yeah, that was fantastic yeah see gabe any other favorite moments i think i'm good man i talked about my two my two big ones already so i think i'm i'm solid nice uh so there's this moment from vi near the very end of the book I, i think it might even be the last chapter or maybe the chapter before the last chapter where uh, she's talking with Ariel about what does it mean to like, I guess, make decisions involving like, do you serve the Chantry or do you do your own thing? Like what values do you hold dear and, and stuff like that? And it's kind of right before she decides to take the Kakari and, and leave. She said, after watching someone else's tail scrawled before her eyes, Vi felt something changed about how she thought about her own. Life isn't a book where you can flip to the end to see if the tale ends happily enough to be worth pursuing. You can make goals, but you have to jot one page at a time. One paragraph, one line, one word. Knowing every time you touch the quill to the page that some other character you have no control of may come crashing into the story to change everything. But as much as it seemed that the choice of what she was going to do next was all about Kyler, in the most important way, it wasn't about Kyler at all. He was merely the present iteration of a recurring question that Vi would have to answer in love and war and everything in between until her answer became part of her character. What kind of woman am I? And I I just, I don't know. I like that because it it's is a good like ending, you know, yeah. for her. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a good like kind of final moment for Vi where she's like, you know, she's been almost kind of like 
brainwashed, I guess, by the, uh, by the Chantry. And she's kind of like bought into this whole sisterhood thing, which she admits is not a bad thing. But the way that the, the Chantry is currently functioning is not good. Yeah. Um, and so it is kind of this moment where she's like, you know, do I run and cut my losses or do I try to stay here and affect change? But then she realizes, like, I can't. Like, everybody here looks down on me. Everybody has manipulated me at every turn. She's like, there, there's nothing I can do here. And so that yeah. moment where she, like, decides to leave, she's like, am, am I going to be the woman that, you know, just does what I'm told by the Chantry and, like, plays into their schemes and I'm just a pawn for them? Yeah, or, puppet. yeah, or, or am I going to be, like, you could look at it several ways. Like she could be like, am I going to follow like my heart's desire and like head towards Kyler? Or am I going to like try to do what's right and head towards Kyler and tell him about everything I messed up doing. And so I feel like that is kind of like, it's, it's an early turning point for Vi. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm hoping that that leads to, uh, to really good character arc because we've seen her do kind of unforgivable things before where she she murdered uh jarl oh and yeah. mm -hmm. at the time she had a better excuse though she was under like direct mind Compulsion, control yeah. yeah um and this time she wasn't she was just like really manipulated yeah mm -hmm. so who's to say if if he's gonna forgive her for that but yeah anyway i i thought it was a i thought it was kind of a great quote to leave her character on and unfortunately after that moment there's not really a whole lot of uh hopeful moments so yeah. <laughs> i think that that's probably the best place to yeah. leave off on yeah. <laughs> uh, so all right so we'll get out of here with any um any like last minute theories like is there anywhere like where do you guys think that there's oh is? i don't freaking know dude i have no idea i have no idea i, c I couldn't even guess and uh, unless I'm he is the Vitruvius, yeah unless yeah. he is Vitruvius. that's what i was gonna say i feel like something's got to pop up pop up where he's somebody yeah. we met in the yeah. or like but... or like kyler goes and he's by himself and he just like finds him at a farm somewhere right you know? it'll like, be very oh, like farseer oh, have you read farseer all right i haven't i haven't oh, yet okay. but i do Gabe, have it i bought it gabe it's read like a part of one the, of the first best book. books i've ever yeah. read <laughs> yeah i, I yeah. read a part then i had to read something else but i have it and i'm gonna continue it nice yeah dude real quick before we go that was weird how he ran into that farmer on the way yeah. to the mountain and then he turned around and the farmer and the farm was fucking gone. Yeah. But he did yeah, say, true. like, I don't know how long I'd been walking. And that's true. Yeah. That's fair. But it was, it was, it was like weird. Kind though. of one of those yeah. things where you're like, wow, and I is... mentioned at the end, you know, like, yeah, when we're like sure. really coming to a close. That's a really good point. I'll have to go back and relook at that. Yeah. Cause, cause it was like, yeah. Okay. Like maybe, you know, maybe he had been walking for a while and then just couldn't see it. But it's like, then why put that in? Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. It's weird. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think we, we talked a lot about Vi. My other kind of theory question is what does Vi do now? Um, but I, I think she, she takes Uli and Leaves tries to entry. find Kyler. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for doing this with me and, and hustling to read this book. I think <laughs> we're all on a bit of a, <laughs> actually dude for the first time fucking ever gabe finished the book like well before wow. anybody else did <laughs> i finished I an like, hour before we did this video yeah, yeah nice. same i was like i i finished it this morning at like 11 o'clock um and gabe had finished it like several days before Jeez, before i what did, did you do like and listen to it all in so, one day. so here <laughs> i thought i well I, pretty much i thought about this and the reason why is because so spencer listens at work but he he has to stop it frequently customer might walk up you got to talk right. to the customer sanders going you have to you can't hear nothing so you pause it i right. don't yeah I listen for 10 hours <laughs> continuously yeah. sometimes even more like yeah. for instance the day before yesterday, I listened for 12 hours straight without a single pause. Oh, my God. Didn't stop at once. <laughs> yeah. That's not possible for me. That's so wild. And only because of my job. And if I get this yeah. new job, that'll never happen again. Right. I, my but, job, I couldn't. Yeah. There'd be so many interruptions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's strictly just due to the work that I do now. But yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought I thought that was cool. It's it's uh there, there's been a few other times that it's happened, but it's always interesting when Gabe 
finishes a book before I do. <laughs> and I'm like, and he'll, I, I love it because he'll text me and he'll be like, okay, like, I'm not going to spoil anything, but where are you at? Like, yeah. and, then, and then I'll be <laughs> yeah. like, I'll be like, oh, like, and then I know that I can speak openly because I know he's well ahead of me yeah. or yeah. if not finished. And yeah. I can be like, oh, this thing just happened. He's like, oh, I know exactly where you are. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I love yeah. it. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I, I like it too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks guys for, for hanging out. This was a ton of fun. Um, I am very buzzed off this wine. I think I've had several glasses. <laughs> Time, by for this yeah. <laughs> Time for more Time for more Gabe, Gabe and I are going directly from this episode into playing a video game together. <laughs> I'm so excited because I... Like I'm, I'm pretty drunk, so it'll be fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it was really fun talking with you guys. Again. Yes. So glad to have you. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming back on. I'm glad that we could, we could get you on. Like, were you on within the last month? Cause we, I think it, we've had like you. Months, right? Yeah. 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 The right. shadow yeah. Cast so, yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to, uh, you know, the, the next night angel book is going to be at least a couple of years. So we'll have to find find you something to read well you soon. guys need to both read farseer farseer yeah talk dude. about it oh yeah because <laughs> that's okay. like probably my favorite series ever of all time period hands down so okay it, it, as long as you're ready to be emotionally destroyed yeah you just have to know that going in like you're speaking it's one our of those language. books like yeah you, you never <laughs> stop thinking destroyed. about it <laughs> yeah and you use it like as a comparative to like everything going forward so yeah. I would really love to hear your thoughts on Farseer. And I, I, it's about time to do a reread for me. It's been long enough. So nice. nice. Okay. What would you well, read? Would you read the sequel trilogy to uh, not Game of Thrones, uh, Red Rising? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. If, if, if Gabe, if Gabe finishes Morningstar and he's like, I love this, then maybe we I'm. Do. I'm going to say that I will love it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, cool. let yeah. me know. Just For give sure. me a timeline. As long as it's not another, like, me doing it as in a rush. In, like, in a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Yes, no. Yeah. Damn, because when I say I did nothing. Yeah. yeah. No, it's more like I did nothing these last few days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Read. Yeah. That Dude, was it. I, it was like, a rush to the finish. <laughs> I, I genuinely felt so bad about that because it was one of those things <laughs> where it's like, the book comes out on, I think it was the 26th. So we, we yeah, literally like had, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, we literally had like four days to read this. Yeah. Um, if not a and little bit less. And it was an less. 830 page book. Uh, <laughs> it was, yeah. Anybody watching, look at that shit. Yeah. yeah that's that was huge. It's a big I think it book. was a 24 hour audio book. If you went at the regular speed. It was, no, it was like, no. it was like 30, 34 hours. Oh, was yeah, it? 34 yes. hours at regular yeah. speed. Yeah. For me at uh, two times what I read, it was, it was like 17 hours. Yeah. 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 So massive, pretty yeah. wild. Massive book. But yeah, I, I felt really bad about that because I was like, okay, it comes out on the 26th, but we have to put out an episode immediately to catch the hype and the yeah, buzz around of course, it of course. and so it's like i'm so sorry everybody's like pushing to read this thing. <laughs> but it was no. worth it though so it's yeah. all good yeah definitely yeah. worth it well yeah i i definitely appreciate you guys thanks for <laughs> thanks course. for hanging in there uh, absolutely all right. bye guys have a good night well wait i gotta do the outro he's gotta do that oh, oh, oh. <laughs> i know we, we kind of we kind of skipped the format yeah. right there yeah, yeah sorry sorry <laughs> we're not we're, your fault <laughs> we're, we're almost there yeah. uh all no, right, guys, we're going to okay. wrap it up there. <laughs> Let us know what you thought of Night Angel yeah. Nemesis in the comments below or over on Twitter or Discord link in the description. Uh, speaking of things that are linked in the description, don't forget to check out our Patreon for exclusive member benefits. As always, subscribing and liking is the best way to support us, so please do so if you enjoy this content. Stay tuned for more Night Angel content as well as some Cosmere content on the way very, very soon. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, please promise us that you won't strap yourself to the side of a mountain until the next Night Angel book comes out, as tempting as it might be. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>